Tricky Black Steel. You're listening to Russell Brand on BBC Radio 2. Russell Brand Radio, how do I help you? Ironically, I did get a letter from the government the other day. It was a tax rebate, so I did. I just opened it, read it, said, "Oh, that's nice." Here with me, as always, not with me in a physical sense, but much more a metaphysical and telecommunicational sense, is my co-host Matt Morgan. Hello, Matt. How are you? I'm very well. Hello, Russell. This is a pre-recorded show, of course. What time is it where you are in London? It's just gone one o'clock in the morning. Are you a little bit drunk? More than a little bit. When I was talking to the engineer, Matthew, when preparing the show, as I like to do, it's a a little trick you might learn yourself one day if you ever get your silly heavy metal show. I said, uh, like, (laughs) we heard, he went, um... Preparing the show, uh, you seem to arrive later than me. I didn't hear any preparation. I've I've been here for quite a long while. When they said that's Russell arriving, they mean that's Russell arriving back from the last bit of preparation he's been doing out in the corridor, thinking, getting himself hyped up, getting himself ready. Right, I goes, uh, I was listening to our producer, Vicar's son and guiltmonger, Nick Philps, and he was having a conversation with Paul, the engineer in London, and I heard him go, what? Pissed, pissed angry, or pissed drunk, right? And and, and like, I went, who's that? Who's that? And Nick Phelps, and Nick Phelps went, Matt. And I went, I goes right. It's obviously, obviously pissed drunk. And, uh, and he went, yeah, yeah. And he went, yes, he is drunk. I was right. How drunk is he? Uh, um, w- give me. And then I thought that's a difficult question to answer. How drunk is someone? So I goes, give me an example of something that he said. Right. That was my question <laughs> to Paul to be passed on. Give me an example of something he said. And Paul's response was, he slouched in the lift. He's not saying anything because he's <laughs> slouched in a lift. Just five you know how minutes I ago. Ride a lift. You know what I do. <laughs> you, you slouch. Slouched in a lift. Yeah, because right? I'm do you conserving know what? I, energy. Do I sound I drunk so. to you? No, I sound You sound focused. like a right drunk. Do you don't I? sound focused. I bet even you weren't even slouched. I bet slouch was generous. I bet <clears> you were slumped. I bet, okay. you, I bet you were in a corner of a if lift, I was drunk, drenched. Could I say this? Mm. Go Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. The very fact that you have brought up Mary Poppins as a reference point to sobriety <laughs> is a suggestion of drunkenness in itself, Matt. You are a desperately drunk man, possibly masking all sorts of inner trauma. Probably the <laughs> same thing that drives you into the arms of restricted martial art Krav Maga. This is a, an email from Laura Heap. Hi, Russell, Matt, G, Nick and Noel and whoever else is in studio. I was watching Michelle Ryan, Zoe off EastEnders and now the Bionic Woman, on Jonathan Ross the other day and she mentioned that she trained in Krav Maga. In, in the film uh, Jennifer, in the film Enough Jennifer Lopez learns Krav Maga Hilary Swank said at the Oscars she is training in Krav Maga. Is Matt doing Krav Maga because it is the ideal martial art for vulnerable women? That's from Laura Heap. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> is that what's driven you into the arms of Krav Maga? No. Krav Maga friend to the vulnerable. The fact is it's a, you know, it's a proper martial art by an army. Proper... The army came for up ladies. with ladies! But ladies can do it <laughs> it's because the it doesn't rely. Art you can keep in your handbag. It doesn't rely rely on physical strength. <laughs> the one martial art that boobs can't spoil. Matty Morgan. What about when you used to do <laughs> kickboxing and you had to wear a headband? And the main reason you did it because you thought you looked good when you were sweaty. Hey, I looked I looked nice in there, high kicking my way around that gymnasium. It was an attractive. Scared process. of being in the showers at the end. I seem to remember. I liked the showers, they were the highlights. Didn't like it if the teacher came in with us, did you? No, I thought that was unprofessional. I think it was. <laughs> he had other lessons. I don't know why he was stopping even for a shower, wandering around there with his vest on and his trousers and pants off. Soaping you up. To... Soaping oh, me, I've got some washing in your eyes me. There, Russell. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay, I feel clean. I don't need to see, I don't need to see, I can feel. I feel. I feel. <laughs> You're washing me dirty. You're washing me dirty, Uncle Cleaning Boxer. Uncle Kickboxer washes me and I get more dirty. Now, the thing is, Cotton Guy show... is quite, fancy, uh, quite uh, sort of fashionable and fancy at the moment. A lot of women know, are doing it. For what? The, you know, fashionable the har- and fancy? Yeah, but the hardcore of us, you know, we sort of... When, I'm you're not part Michelle of the hardcore, Ryan. are you? Yeah. If you're part of the hardcore, I'd hate to see the frivolous <laughs> outskirts. <laughs> Uh, later on in the show, we have got LA chum Max Beasley turning up. He's a nice gentleman. We've got uh, radio plagiarist Ray Darcy turning really? up. Really? He's, he's not going to turn up here, is he? He'll be scribbling away with his notepad even now. It's not a live show, so like now he'll just be sort of thumbing his way through last week's content. But uh, Ray Darcy is going to be on the line a little bit later. Last week's show, of course, we had Noel Gallagher in studio. We spoke also to Jeff Conway, the uh, artist who plays Kaniki 
in Greece. I don't know if we're going to have any more from him. I did quite like him. Do you, did you, do you remember him, mate, the Kaniki? Or was yes, he I lost do. behind the veil of booze? <laughs> I do remember him, but I, you know, I never Did you actually... drink away that memory <laughs> of I still, Kaniki? I still haven't seen Greece, and I still don't really have a visual sort of idea of who he is. I but asked you to do one thing before the next show. I said, could you please watch Greece before the next show? <laughs> That's all I've asked of you. And I'd said to watch the films of Macaulay Culkin, neither of which you have achieved. I've seen what the films of Macaulay doing? Culkin. You, you know, you tell stories Outline. about Mr. Macaulkin, don't you? Mr. Macaulkin! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Macaulkin! Is he, work- is he a working actor now, or is he, like, unemployable? No, he's employable. He does gritty theatre, I think, and things like that, you know. He's, he's keeping himself busy unemployable. in Unemployable. We, we could get him on a show. We could get could him we? on here. We could oh, have that'd a- be great. Yeah, it'd be nice to talk to him, wouldn't it? Lovely. Pops is he, is he all right? Is he, you know, like, because a lot of those people who were famous when they were children... Go a it? bit mad. Yeah. Um, well, no, he's quite nice. I, I, I met him briefly <clears throat> a couple of times because he was going to have a meet out of Mila Kunis, and uh, he was very, very pleasant and sweet-natured man. He struck me as. Yeah. Although he looked like a, a good tap with a spoon would send him sprawling. <laughs> so you'd, you'd be good with your craft, my girl. You could make no, he'll be my first lad. victim. <laughs> yeah, use that. Lash out. So, hold on, we've got, we've got some items as well. It's nice, it's just me and you, isn't it, Matt, without Noel Gallagher come blustering in, elbowing He's his way stealing my things. glory in a lot of ways, which he did in through the 90s. In a lot of ways he was. He, a lot of those Britpop hits could have been yours. I've just been handed a picture of Kaneki. Have you? Who hands you a picture of Kaneki? Who have you got in there? Friend of the show. Well, we had to stop the show briefly there for technical difficulties because this is a pre-recorded show. The Don't ISDN tell cable. people, you what? fool! What? People like to hear about Don't that. Don't blame the ISDN cable. A lot it's of people the say ISDN that... cable in your little brain, isn't it? <laughs> the ISDN cable ain't working properly. And I'd like to say this, ISDN, you are a bunch of punks, real <laughs> punks, and I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Mate, it your wasn't cable's the ISDN cable. It was I wouldn't use... I am a star cable in Muscle <laughs> Brand's brain. Do you know what? I wouldn't use ISDN cable to floss my ass because it is <laughs> disgusting cable. It must it be quite a thick cable and it must go under the sea. It goes right under the sea. Under the sea. Don't it's worry, ISDN it's wetter. cable. <laughs> oh, I'd like you to and have to come home pulling yourself along it, along the seabed. What, glugging with a really big snorkel? Yeah. Right. <laughs> no way, mate. When I come home, it's going to be on a bloody great big cruise ship. Here, I went on a private jet the other day. It's nice boring. In there. No, is it boring? Whose was it? Russell Crowe's? Me, Russell Crowe, uh, Chaplin, Presley. <laughs> <laughs> we was up there just polishing our Oscars and that. Then there was nearly a crash, but we were out there. It crashed in the cornfield. We had to start our own society, and we was all like C-3PO's, and we got worshipped by the Ewoks, right? But then the Ewoks turned against us. I got off with one, and I had a little baby. It had head like a teddy bear. I still loved it, though, mate. I still loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting sex from you, don't I? What do you mean? Here, come over. You won't believe it. The tarts will do anything, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the tarts. Yeah. The tarts yeah. over here are well different, mate. <laughs> yeah, mate, you're going to love these tarts. They'll do anything to Got anything. Got Garnet on holiday with his handkerchief <laughs> all knotted up on his head, sending me texts. <laughs> yeah, come over. This water's lovely. You should see the tarts, mate. Yeah, hold up. Orange juice is only 50p a glass, mate. <laughs> Got bits in it and everything. Eat as Bro- much as you want. Fill your boots, son. <laughs> yeah, see that son? Salad bar, mate. You can have as much as you want now, then. <laughs> Go back for a second, Elpins. No one will do you, mate. Hold up, mate. I see Lenny Kravitz the other day in the supermarket. He was off his nut. Did you see Lenny Kravitz? Why is that in your head? I've just been thinking about him because I saw a picture of him in this photographer. Done a sh- I've done a shoot with this photographer this morning. I see a picture of uh, Lenny Kravitz in his lookbook posing with Steve Tyler. Look I don't want to close my eyes. That's what they call it, a lookbook. Portfolio. All right, You've exposed portfolio. yourself as a silly man. <laughs> Well, went, hold on. Russell, look at my... Oh, my portfolio, I won't understand that. <laughs> at my <Yeah>. lookbook. <laughs> yes, Is it a book. pop-up book, mister? <laughs> mister, none of these things pop up. Except, actually, it's weird you should say that, because the whole reason I brought this up is because Lenny Kravitz's belly button did pop up. Really popped Willie, up. Russell, you should know this by now. 
It popped out, then he sprayed something in my eyes. <laughs> Lenny, Lenny, you made me feel a feeling. No, it, was, it definitely was his belly button, mate, because this was well, well above his willy. About eight inches above his willy, which wasn't reaching that far, man. I was saying, in case Kravitz gets a big head. Yeah, it was peeping out <laughs> the middle of his belly. Like, I, now look, yes, yeah, so I was doing a photo shoot, mate. It was going quite well, the old sh- taking photos of me and that, you know. Come over. It's lovely over here, mate. Yeah, I had a drink the other day. It had an umbrella in it, mate, a paper. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> I had a curly straw with glitter in it. See through, but with glitter. Yeah, but Come then on, when I start thinking, yeah, we'll go over, and then I hear you having yeah. a little argument down the ISDN line. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, no, nah, it's not for no, me. No, no, no. in his house. It will look You'll nice, it. a big sunny daydream on the outside. I think, but, you know, when you think of a wedding cake, and then you think, yeah. oh, God, it's too sweet, all and all those nuts in it. fruit and in the middle. Got to cut yeah, through the layers. No, hold on, no, hold on. I'm not like a delicious multi-tiered wedding cake, because on the inside, there's looking side hearts of gold heart of gold i've been so upbeat over here you want to ask the people i work with have you experienced any complaints well look they, that, let me assure you matt there's a lot of people shaking their heads and saying that i've been great in this room now nick philps radio producer he's having a time of his life nick Lennon, you said he looked jaded and tired and he'd grown a beard all right, okay, he might look jaded and tired and bearded. <laughs> he, may sp- he may look off into the distant future and speak forlornly and sad of Chris Evans' days as the <laughs> glory era of when it was much less aggro. But let me tell you this, that boy has never been happier since the day he discovered that there is no God. This, <laughs> this, has, made, this has been a relief for that boy, a release. He's gone from strength to strength, he has, under my stewardship. Is, I don't understand what everyone's doing every day because there's a lot of you out there basically getting you in a car in the morning isn't it i don't have to get in a car in the morning i'll just stay in the house yoga teacher comes over natalie she looks like her own chihuahua lovely big brown eyes she's got lovely full lips she's nice do a bit of yoga with her then alfred she a comes yoga over teacher, or is that a front for a prostitute <laughs> i don't know mate i mean it's a type <laughs> of yoga it's type of yoga why she bring her chihuahua around <laughs> Because it's just like, why not bring the chihuahua round? Okay, this is Hollywood, mate. People bring chihuahuas round. I met an oligarch's daughter. She had a chihuahua. Lovely little thing. I thought it'd be snappy. Yeah, I met an oligarch's daughter, all right? Her dad right. Stu- does stuff in gas and oil. I think it's a camping equipment or something. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> very powerful. Very powerful, man. you're cozying up to everyone powerful, aren't you? Oh, you should see me cosy in a way. But the like, revolution, the wheels have fallen off that, haven't they? They ain't, mate. The revolution's looking better than ever now, because I'm in a genuine position to implement a good old revolution. We, that revolution documentary, we could be making as a feature film. Things are going, well, this is truly the land of opportunity. Of course, it's no England. Ah, oh, blighty, her majesty. Gin in teacups, as dear Pete Doherty would say. But, you know, it's good here, mate, for, you know, for ruthless self-advancement. If that's no, I'll come chart. over it. So you're going you're gonna to pop home, then you're going to go somewhere else, and then you'll be yeah. back. Yeah. There and I'll come over then. Come over, I'll look after you. You'll be all right, mate. I don't want you looking nice. after me, mate. That's smothering. I'll... Hold on, right, you. everyone, go on YouTube and have a look at Debunked. It's me and Matt doing a sketch. Russell Brand Debunked. D B U N K D. Right, there's probably an apostrophe or something in there. Have a look at how crack you up. It's me and Matt doing a sketch. It deserves to have. I was when I was I was looking on YouTube for some reason the other day, showing <laughs> people clips of me. Can't remember what my basic motivation was, and I came across that proper funny, so funny that is. And uh, what's that other thing that we done? Uh, the Weather Clerks that's on the DVD. Some funny stuff. You Very... can't say that on the air. Can't I? Publicly. You can't go, oh, we've done some really funny stuff. It's on your DVD. Yeah, but hold on. But it's you not like head. stuff that... We're not famous for it or anything. It's just stuff that we've done. It's just was mucking around. It's all right. It's only like saying I made a nice pasta the other day, which I didn't because I wouldn't eat pasta because it gets all clogged up in your guts. And a little you tip cook. for you there. And I wouldn't cook. That's right. Good and point. And it wouldn't be nice. It wouldn't be nice. <laughs> 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 I've cooked a hateful dish of... <laughs> Cold spam here. Like, yeah, but you know me. I would not like to cook up a food. I just wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> well, no, me and me and G have shared our um, pain with the uh, vegetarian sausages Sorry. on lettuce Oi! with balsamic vinegar all over it. <laughs> dinner that we had that forced down our necks more than once. Of ungrateful. Come pigs. over. I'm lonely. I'm. Oh, I've been in rehab. Come over. I'll cook. Get beer. I'll cook. Are you going to do a vegetarian dinner? Yeah. No, no, no. I've got a lot of ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> then what comes out of the kitchen? <laughs> chopped up. Not even chopped up. Look like he's chewed them. Or just like karate chopped the sausages up. 
<laughs> and it was all violently chucked on a plate. This sort of balsamic dressing that he would seem to be using for everything, shower gel, everything. <laughs> seemed to be everywhere in his house. He paddled out of his bedroom. That innit? balsamic vinegar was like a brother to me when I came out of rehab. Where were you? I had that balsamic vinegar. It stood shoulder to shoulder with me. You bear in mind, young man, I've been in Hollywood one month and you're slumped in a lift. Slumped in a lift while I was cruising down Sunset Bloody Boulevard in a white Cadillac getting numbers off floozies as we stopped to the traffic lights. You're slumped in a lift, all right? Floozies? Um, well, they can't have had that good moral fire by the way they leapt into our Cadillac. I've never seen anything like Whose it. Whose car was it? Like a couple of Erdling Divine Browns, they were. <laughs> may, very, <laughs> may very well have been Divine Browns. She won't get a penny off of me. Not one penny, Divine. Um, it's a car we hired it for that photo shoot. Anyway, we've got a lot of good things coming up in the show. Because remember, this is a radio show. We've got Max Beasley coming up later. Mr G will be summarising the show in his own uh, inimitable way, even though he turned up here really, really late for reasons he is not yet is, uh, divulged to us. But I can only assume he's... What does he do now? He's in pantomimes, isn't he? He's Ballet not shows. in pantomimes. He's in the West End. What's he doing in the West End? A show. Knocking out weed? What's, no. that, what's going on with him? <laughs> He's doing a show, and you're just a jealous. I am not jealous of because Mr. G's. theatre is a, you know, it's a, it's a better medium to be in than movies. How's it going for him? Is it going well for him? Is it in this show? What are the reviews like? Oh, they're going to be bloody cruel. Can't take the London press. Very good. Torn him apart, have they? He turned up here hmm? carrying bouquets. <laughs> garlands round his neck. <laughs> He's got a diamond Probably. earring. No, it's like a chandelier hanging off him. No, oh, Jesus, it's probably going to weaken his neck, though, isn't it? That chandelier, probably no, his neck will go. He looks stronger than ever. Oh, no, Christ. I suspect this has gone to his head. Has he gone mad? Terribly, okay, it's very bad back from bowing. Oh, God, no, no. I'm coming back to London. <laughs> I can't live like this. Uh, if you want to email us, do russell.brand at bbc.co.uk. You, you can contribute an email for next week's show when I will be in it's London with live, my old oppo, Matt email. Morgan. Don't yeah, listen no, to him. Email it for next week, I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's live. If okay. it was live, things like this would happen. Hello, goodbye. Lady Gravit, belly button coming up to see the world. <laughs> that wouldn't happen in a live show, would it? Oh, no, we've probably cut that out. So, but anyway, if we left it in, that means that we've all gone mad. Hello, says Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Russell and Matt and everyone else. I just wanted to say that Jeff Conaway's Wikipedia page, Jeff Conaway, Kaniki from Greece, has been updated again. According to his... And this, is the, that, uh, this is that update. According to his interview on the BBC Radio 2 Russell Brand show, 0803 Conaway regularly carries a hatchet knife with him. He blames this on growing up in New York. Thank you very much. Please continue making this radio show forever and ever. Love and kisses from Holland. Sarah there, on behalf of everyone in Holland. And thank you. I'd like to accept your thanks. And we will carry on doing the radio show for as long as financially possible for the BBC. <clears throat> so, Matthew Morgan, what have you got to contribute? <laughs> Loads of stuff. Go on, then. Contribute with one thing. Let's hear ya. Why are you slumped I've in the got... lift? What? I've got, I got women. I'm going to a spa <laughs> with the woman out of Guinness Book of Records. Look, what's oh, wrong with you? Don't tell Pete. Uh, that's why I don't <laughs> talk to you anymore. Right, you wonder you... I don't tell you anything? You thought, hang on, Matt doesn't confide in me anymore. Why not? Well, well, because it's all content on. to you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you know what? Sometimes when I'm listening to you talk, I think this may be tedious to listen to, but it might provide content <laughs> once it goes through the prism of my brilliance. So uh, that's the only way I can manage to put up with your meanderings, oh, your Russell. wanderings. Let's talk about who you're in love with. Uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> Mr. G will be summarising the show. Love. <laughs> Matthew, stop it, you're drunk. You With don't know what you're talking about. woman should never love. <laughs> Come on, now for our item, <laughs> Nanny Boat. Now, I believe we've got a brilliant jingle. I'm not in love with Anna, stop it, because there's a girl I really care about in the UK, and she'll hear that, and she'll think that I'm genuinely in love with someone. But that... One girl Basically, in the what UK, what means she is. knows who she is. <laughs> she knows she, who she is, this one girl. The one with the arms and legs. <laughs> arms her. and leggies, I call her. Arms and leggies and face. You're very special, arms and leggies. <laughs> arms and leggies and human DNA. All of you. <laughs> Uh, the one of Matthew, you. Matthew, you idiot. What? There's, as I said, very clearly, Only arms and leggies. That's right, not one arm or leg. The girl with the shoes, Two. more than one pair of shoes, that's her. <laughs> Shoe girl. Now, look, Matthew, stop ruining the show. We've got a lovely Russell's item. Russell's back in a few days. He's trying to keep everyone sweet. <laughs> <laughs> come on, girls, get on board. Don't <laughs> muck about. Hey, come on, love is no, blind. Listen, There's no I've been point in LA, but I've only thought about you, and I'm back on Monday. Come round. I, hey, 
Yeah, I was talking about you on my radio show. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about you and your arms and legs. Now, come on. Listen, shut up. Stop ruining my life. Now, time for our new item, or actually it's an item we do always, Nanecdote. Hello, now, last dear. week... Hello, dear, oh, dear, oh, crummy pipes yeah, there it is. and everything we brilliant. can say. Things we say, we don't know what we're doing, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. What a lovely jingle there. I think it was from some lad called Roger, was it? I think it was called something like that. Possibly. He was. This is... A... Possibly. <laughs> this is uh, an email from Abby. <clears throat> it's for our item, an anecdote. It goes like this. My nan calls KFC JFK. That's from Abby there. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she goes there, she's worried about the grassy knoll. Poor woman. So there'll be more from... Uh, that was all part shooter, wasn't it? There'll be more from that anecdote next week. Um, OK, Max Beasley's coming up on the show. Also, later on, have we got anyone else turning up who we're going to talk to? Darcy. Oh, bloody Ray Darcy. Listen to this. Ray Marilyn Darcy. Manson? You promised us Manson. We moved the show. We were meant to do the show live, so Marilyn Manson was going to come, but then we've moved the show, because uh, what have I got, I've got to do something tomorrow night? Press and promo for, for getting Sarah Marshall. Don't know if you've seen my review in Variety. Have you, Matt? No, I haven't. Tell me about you, it. Oh, you don't read Variety. Bit out of touch. <laughs> Bit out of touch with the industry there, Matthew. So you would have known that I've been called Russell Brand is passable... As all the snow. <laughs> Don't lie. That says Russell Brand is marvellously controlled and droll. Yeah? What? You? Mar- Those are two yeah. things I would never attribute to you. That's because I was acting. That's because I was doing my acting. When I'm doing the acting, I no. could be different. Watch there this now. There two things you acted in that film. One was a first name and one was a second name. <laughs> Hold on, what about the bit where I got something stuck in my leg? I gutted, because I didn't have nothing That's stuck in my leg. special effects. Uh, hold on, all right. Is this a special effect? Ah, my leg hurts! Right? That's actoring. Russell, okay? are you all right? <laughs> Ark! My leg hurts! See, no, <laughs> that was because of the actoring, Matt. There was never <clears throat> anything even wrong with my leg. So that just shows the kind of quality of actoring you could expect off of old Russ. OK, should, buddy, let's listen to a record. In a minute, I'll talk to you about Ray Darcy. It's going to be brilliant. You can email us if you want. We'll read it out next week's show. Hopefully, we can get Marilyn Manson in. I imagine he's the sort of man who has a free diary and doesn't mind being mucked about. <laughs> it's always struck me as a sort of fellow. goes, it's all right, Marilyn Manson. We've got a move to the interview. Come now, day. Yeah, yeah. I don't want <laughs> About me bothering your wife. Yeah, yeah. Have you oh, met Marilyn him? Mace. Have you met Marilyn? No, you're supposed to call him Manson, aren't you? And all called, in, called no, it an old Gallagher. Brian. I think they Brian. called him Brian. Was he, he's got all the trouble of changing his name to Marilyn Manson and you just call him the name that he'd done in the first place out yeah, of his mum's gross. mouth. Oh, I've got no an anecdote. Way. What do you mean? An actual anecdote? An, an anecdote. <laughs> all right. From an Let's email. Let's then. We've from, got an emailed an anecdote. From Wayne. Listen to this, it's funny. All right, do you not want to do a jingle? Oh, it goes on for a while, but let's do it. Hello, oh, dear. Right. Hello, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, crummy pipes and everything. Things we say. Things we say. We don't know what we're doing, do we? <laughs> Good, though, isn't it? Brilliant, actually. Brilliant. My name, Viv, is 86, and recently, when my dad was leaning perilously far out of the window of his top floor flat to adjust his TV aerial, my nan shrieked, Good gracious, be careful, son. That's how Emu died. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at Rod Hull's death. How dare you laugh? You stupid man. <laughs> Why did you say that? You stupid, <laughs> stupid old woman. You stupid Hang on, what do you think the... Well, like, that's weird, isn't it? Because Emu what? has died, effectively, when Yeah, Rod but you fell could still off. use him. You could still use oh, Emu. Oh, you I mean, would, would like... you? In front of his wife? Happily. Oh, at the wake. <laughs> Don't say that, come on. <laughs> well, no, listen, Emu could live on. That's his legacy. That's Rod's greatest no, work. No, because Emu was, you know, brought to life by Rod. If you yeah, put him, he, he wouldn't be in you if you're around him, would he? Just, what would he be? Just... Except he'd be much more interested in boobs than he'd ever been before. <laughs> he'd be basically the same guy. Emu seems to have turned into some low-grade sex offender <laughs> under his new tutelage with Russell Brand. What would he be with you? Oh, look, there's Emu reaching for his umpteenth can of Strongbow. And then giving <laughs> it to his master. <laughs> 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 Emu, if you insist, it's Emu, it's Emu. He doesn't want to see me happy. <laughs> <laughs> you and Emu trapped in some drunken blur of a relationship. Okay, so well, that was that. me for having the odd drink. Since you went yeah. to rehab, do you remember <laughs> when you used to have a little bottle of gin in your handbag? I yes. looked after you. I used to say, have a mint, mate, you stink. It was nine <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that was touching that, the way you used to go, have a mate, mint, mate, you stink. <laughs> Very moved by that. And then you have to go was... at me for having a can of cider. You used to drink <laughs> gin before you went anywhere, and you'd be crying and go, this meeting's going to go well. And I'd go, well, you're covered in tears and you stink of booze. It's all right, <laughs> it's all right. 
Oh, it's a good sign. Oh, it's a good sign. <laughs> right before the storm, oh boy. Ah, right, let's get in there. A fisherman's <laughs> friend, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather swig in the old gin than a fisherman's <laughs> friend. And then off we go. This will be good. Of... Okay, Mike Matthew, we're meeting the chairman of UK Play. <laughs> now, this situation <laughs> requires a glass of gin. <laughs> tell me, tell me, boy. You've brought my fisherman's friend, haven't you? Meetings with you back in those days were mad. <laughs> I remember when you... You went in a meeting, pulled your trousers and pants down, picked up a fire extinguisher and refused to let go of it <laughs> until they commissioned the show. And what a show it was! Rebrand! Starring Russell Brand having a mental breakdown for your amusement. Check that out on YouTube as well. But particularly have a look at Debunked. Very funny. Because I want... Because I've only about a thousand people have watched it and it'd be good. Let's get that figure up as if it's a telephone. What a sad Look, it's a case. telephone. Looking what? at the numbers on YouTube. A thousand you people have watched it. You can't help but notice. You can't help but notice. How long do you spend you? looking at yourself on the internet? In, I mean, you know, on average, on a day. Wake up at about eight, look at YouTube <laughs> to about ten in the evening, go back to bed again. Another busy day in front of YouTube tomorrow. All right, let's play a song. I call it MeTube. <laughs> All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, hold on. <laughs> That's good. Um, right, so hold on. I've got an important thing. I'm doing some gigs over here in Los Angeles on the 5th and 6th of April in the Paul Gleason Theatre. Matt, get over here for them gigs. And everyone else, if you're listening to this show in America, Paul Gleason Theatre, buy tickets for that. There's only about 90 bloody tickets and there's 200 million people in America. I like them odds. Surely we can shift those 90 it's tickets. It's a 90 seater. It's only little. I'm just practicing how to do stand up, and I've got to practice. Paul Gleason Theatre. So yeah, if you well, get you have to like that. slow down and talk differently for the Americans. Do you think? I think I'm going to have to. Yeah. Also, a lot of my anti-corporate, anti-American, hypocritical statements are going to have to be toned down as well. Yeah, now that I'm be in America, dra- I'll, I'll do it draped in a flag. I'll be like Apollo Creed doing this gig, <laughs> living in America. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a glorious homecoming for me. Where well, it's my ticker tape parade. So um, okay, then yeah, do come to that thing, and I'm going to keep going on about that over the course of the show to drum it home to people. So, Matthew, what, hold on, let's listen to one of my records. It's near the, still yeah. the beginning of the show. Oh, God, what do you want to listen to? Well, I've got Soul Limbo by Booker T queued up. Soul Limbo by Booker T and the Green Onions? <laughs> <laughs> what do you well, want? Why don't, we listen to, uh, like, why don't we listen to Carly Simon, Nobody Does It Better, for Johnny Lee Miller? I just don't think he'll listen. Because, yeah, we won't be listening, it's not in the And then we've put Carly Simon on and not even got any benefit out Why of it. Why did well, he ask for just that? Say, I don't know, he must like it. All right, so Johnny Lee Miller, if you are listening, we did nearly put it he on. must be they in love are... with someone who could never love him. I know that pain. God. <laughs> <laughs> Still, you know, we just have to soldier on, don't we, in life? I'll always have my beloved girl in England and her <laughs> arms and legs and face and eyelashes <laughs> that I love so well. Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> Interchangeable girl. <laughs> There's one specific. What unique... colour has she got? Listen, I don't. Well, listen, when I... the sun catches it in a certain <laughs> light, it could be any colour. <laughs> listen, Matt, you know I'm very guarded about my private life. <laughs> Where does she I don't live? I like to speak of the intimate well, details. Wherever she lays her hat is her home. <laughs> She's a wanderer. She's a chameleon. She's a drifter. She's an errant child. Come on, let's not let, let her have her privacy. This this miscellaneous girl. <laughs> <laughs> this catch-all her... girl. <laughs> <laughs> this generic term <laughs> that should see me through seven days in London. All right, now stop it. So there's there at least seven actually... of her. Look, <laughs> it's like a Craig David bloody record, this, isn't it? Right, come on, uh, but... music. No, but before music, sex and the guarding of that sex. So there is one special girl, you know who you are. Now, Matthew, why don't you, what do you want to play? Book of tea. Okay, well, this is for a little guy <laughs> called Matt Morgan. <laughs> hey, uh, we've had some ups, we've had some downs, there's been some crazy times, but ultimately we're bound together by some twisted creative vine that bonds our two hearts. Mr G there, he'll always be there as well, clutching his bouquets, soaking up the acclaim of the West End Theatre. Let's just hope those cruel critics don't turn <laughs> on Mr G and destroy his fragile ego, the vain... Deplorable despot, Mr. G. <laughs> this is for you and for Matt Morgan. It's Booker T, once called by me, Booker T and the Green Onions, even though that was just one song that Booker T did. What song is he going to do now, Matt? Soul Limbo. Soul Limbo, Soul Limbo. Yeah, listen to the Russell Brown Cricket song. song. Oh, I like that. It's going to cheer you up. Cricket song, the cricket is on. Cricket song, the cricket. That was that song by Booker T, Cricket One or Sank. What is it, Matt? Soul Limbo. 
Soul limbo. I don't know what he means by that. Soul, soul limbo. Limbo. Well, well like your, lim- your soul's doing a limbo dance. I think it's life. about limbo dancing as opposed to being in sort of purgatory in limbo. Yeah, but bloody hell, I'd rather have a song about... Because if imagine you were in purgatory and that was the vibe of it, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? Da, 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 oh, heaven or hell, hey, let's stay here. Yeah, but it if it was like just that. constantly that song playing... Yeah, because what about if you get down in the dumps and it would be an upbeat soundtrack to it? So it would make a mockery of your tears, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't bear that in purgatory. Oh, no, God. No, no. Oh, God, no, that's the worst thing. You won't be going to anybody. purgatory, don't worry. Straight to hell, straight to hell. I've booked my place. I know I've done wrong. I'm, I'm ready. I stand by every decision I've made. I've, I've been a fool, but God, there's been some good times. There's been some damnably good times. Some great times with girl. Oh, girl. And when I look back <laughs> over my life, it'll be defined by girl. Me and girl. She knows who she is. You know who you are, girl. You know who you are, and it definitely is just you. Yes, you. <laughs> Come on, stop doing that. It's sexist. Right. Now, <clears> Ray <throat> Darcy has been ripping off our show for some time now. So, to our knowledge, he ripped off the item that Matt came up with brilliantly by looking at an, an internationally sold newspaper where your fingers indicate different characteristics. Length of fingers indicate femininity. Obviously, the best finger to have long is the old engagement ring finger. Those of you that have got a long one of them, you're like me, a loyal, decent man. And girl will tell you that if you even doubt it for a second. Another item he half inched was one where Matt tried to break the world record for eating bananas. And there's another email here. This is from a person called Patrick McHugh. Ray Darcy also stole funny things grands say. No. <clears throat> uh, that's according to, yeah, that's oh, apparently a nice right. thing. Look at this. Um, Jeff said, this, then Jeff said this, apparently Matt G. Russell, Ray is pl- playing your comments about him on his show. And if the post below is true, he's doing it deliberately out of context. I'm Irish, says Jeff from Dublin, and have always disliked him. And it always annoyed me that other people like him. Well, now I have proof that he is... Well, no, actually, you know, we're going to talk to Ray Darcy in a minute, so let's not criticise him. He <laughs> might be a nice man. Right, now so I have <clears throat> proof that he... No, actually, he's on hold the on, line. let's hold back there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, for God's sake, what's wrong with you? But, um, hold on, let's see, there's some more. Just heard on the grapevine that Ray Darcy has grown a beard to look like the bloke woman from the Bounty TV ads that Matt Morgan resembles closely. He's also got a job as a pant-wetting magician's assistant. That's obviously... Uh, this is from Ewan. That's obviously yeah, well, a reference very to the time... painful memories for some ...when of us. Matt used to be a magician assistant back home in Dartford and he disgracefully wet himself, ruining the whole magic show. You don't try and defend it, Matt. <laughs> That's what, actually what literally happened. I grew up watching Ray Darcy on the television, says Alan. He's always been nicking items. Right, so hold on. We, we have never spoken to Ray Darcy and I've uh, yet to hear his radio show, but we've got Ray Darcy here now. Let's talk to the actual Ray Darcy. Hello, Ray. <laughs> Hello, Russell. <laughs> oh. Now, How Ray, you? have you... Oh, you know, quite good, I think. You know, probably how you'll be feeling in about five minutes. Hey, Ray, how... We have spoken before. When? Uh, You were a guest on my show. I thought we were mates. Oh, well, perhaps we... You actually called me mate, and now you just cast me off like uh, an old pair of jeans. Not... Like an old pair of stolen jeans <laughs> pinched off my washing line when I'm not looking. Have you done all this? I mean, Ray, you've come on to our show. That is a, a, an honourable thing to do and brave. Uh, we, we don't know yet. These listeners might be lying. Have you been nicking our items? Uh, the answer is no. What uh, do you mean, like, then? How come you've be, done all those things? Or Russell, have you, are they like lying? The, it'd be like the Telegraph accusing the State of Guardian of plagiarism because they're covering the American presidential election. Look, he's thought about that, any old Ray Darcy. So <laughs> about that while listening to the Russell Brand show and taking his notes. Right, hold on, though, Ray. But, like, you know, the, the Guardian... and the, the, You cannot compare the American presidential elections to a man trying to break the world record for eating bananas <laughs> in a minute. That's rather more niche. The American election touches all of us. Banana world record attempts are rather less generic. Yeah, but then, you see, you were plagiarising somebody else. I've never listened to your show. Neither has anybody on the team. There's a guy right, called. Hey, this is preposterous! There's, there's a guy called Chris Big Black Boykin. You're probably familiar with this guy. No. <laughs> He's on MTV USA. Himself and another guy have a show, sort of jackass like. And no. um, seemingly they were the guys to do the banana thing first. And then one of our listeners obviously heard us. They tried it. Emailed into us. We tried it. Then I don't know where you are in the and chronology. The thing chronology the whole thing. Well, I'll tell you where we are, the chronology. Before <laughs> you, doing original content. What about, the, what, about the fi- what about the fingers thing? 
Well, there's a book, isn't there? There is a book, a book yes. I, I've heard of books, certainly, yes. yes. I yeah, mean, you, otherwise, I books, etc. Book, are in a lot of trouble if there isn't. <laughs> books, etc. would have to become etc., which would be a very difficult marketing shift for them. Now, Ray, are you seriously coming on here in, in our good faith, in good faith, on our radio show, saying that you never nicked all them ideas? Because they're quite odd things, the finger what thing, the banana thing. Thing. Nanicdotes. Nanicdotes. You see, what about? The, the odd thing is, Russell, when you were on, right, with us, Yes. Um, we, are, we are worlds apart. We're from different backgrounds. We do different things. But I felt <laughs> some sort of kindred spirit between you and, and me. I, like you called me mate, I thought we had something in common. And maybe that's the explanation for all of this. That somewhere that there there's in the ether that we are connected. We a think creative the same way. synergy. I think yes, that the connection it. may be a radio <laughs> and your ears. Well, <laughs> this, this could be the, the, the direct connection. Well, you see, Russell, Russell, we've been doing what we do for eight years. Yeah, long before years. you were ever No on wonder TV you need content. Too. It must be terribly boring. <laughs> 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 you must be looking for content wherever you get. I'm surprised you're not ripping off Wogan. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so, uh, all right, so, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing. I just, think it's, I just think it's a coincidence. In a way, you know, it's, in a way, it's flattering. But, like, uh, but you it's see, just confusing. Well, I, look, I don't want to... Look, oh, God, you're funny, I'm not funny. So I'm going to lose out here anyway. We are not oh. copying your show, Russell. That's OK. You know, I we don't do that sort of thing. We would right. be embarrassed to do oh. that sort of thing. There are people it's... who do that sort of thing. It's not us. Oh, oh right. Oh, now I feel a bit embarrassed that we even got Stop you on the show. Stop bullying Ray, Russell. <laughs> Hold up, I wasn't bullying Ray. I've always been behind all the Rays. Remember that blind fella, Ray? I was right behind him. I go, you go on, mate. You're blind as a bat. No one gives you monkeys. You'll be all right. Just get paid in one dollar bills. What about Ray Winston? I go, you're tough as old boots. Try the acting. It don't matter how working class you are. You can make it. What about the sun's rays that come down to the earth? I've been very encouraging of those as well. Every single Ray. Stingray. 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 Look, Right, you're obviously a decent, lovely man. I do remember being on your radio show now, and I remember thinking, I like it. And I'd just like to use this opportunity to say, girl, while I was on that radio <laughs> show, it was you I was talking about when I said girl, girl. So, uh, <clears throat> Ray, or as I call you, Radio, the original A of all good radio, <laughs> th th that's just the two of us between Ireland and England, our two separate nations unite at last and create good yet similar radio <laughs> content going forward together because I think we've got a lot of con common enemies out there. Those are the enemies of freedom, the enemies of our own particular philosophies. <laughs> right, Ray, should we be bonded? Ray? Give us a kiss. All right. Yeah, I'll cop for that, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. That was all right up and down your thigh. <laughs> Bye. Ray, it was, it was lovely to... Oh, and Sexualize the, one, one thing. the interview. Sexualize, Ray. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Two things. Ray. Firstly... Um, mm. You're going to come on our show on Tuesday morning. Just to set what? the record. I'm coming straight. on on Tuesday morning. Yes, you are. Yeah, that's the deal. That's why I stayed up. <laughs> All right, and my, my producer just looked at me and went, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Listen, you vicar son, let down scum of the earth insomniac. Did you just put me on a radio, on Ray Darcy's radio show? And, oh, you, you're right. <laughs> let me just tell you a thing or two about Christianity, and don't let your listeners hear this, Ray. But it's a whole thing, is an absolute myth, and your father is a liar. A liar! He's a vicar's son. Uh, Church of England, I'm keen to point out, Ray, before you get offended. Now, so, uh, yeah, OK, so I'm coming on your radio show on Tuesday. Well, thank... No, that's all right. I'll, I'll look forward to it, Ray. And, Russell, Cause... something you may not have heard or read in a newspaper or a book, because mm -hmm. you're in America, is that yes. the Catholic Church have changed things. And they have What's new going mortal... on now? They have new mortal sins. Yeah. Oh, sh no, what You've got to recycle. And, unfortunately... You're a mortal sinner. You're going straight to hell. Well, uh, luckily, I don't believe in them star <laughs> fables. What, what, what mortal sins have I done? Well, drug taking, seemingly now, just, they just decided it's a mortal sin. What is? Drug taking. Uh, drug taking. Drug taking. Well, no. Oh, you better hope they don't put plagiarism in there, Ray. <laughs> You'll be going to the cleaners, mate. They'll take you right down to Chinatown. But listen, in Purgatory, they play some pretty good tunes. Booker T has got this one going on. It's called Soul Purgatory. That's by good Booker look. T and a dirty great big onion. <laughs> so, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, Ray, mate. All right, so I'm coming on your show. Hold on, you're married to your co-host, Jenny, is that right? Well, we're not married. We're partners. Hmm, well, that's against the old Bible. That's I another know. one. That's I another big kick in the well. nuts. Oh, me. my God. OK. <laughs> do you and Jenny have rows on the air? We do, yeah, and off air, yeah. I bet it's sure. worse if you've had a row, then have to do the show. How's that go? Well, actually, that's quite good, because there's an energy. 
<laughs> what? And, and the yeah. energy can reunite you? No, you see, look, right, you have a row, okay? So you can't yeah. bring it on air. Yeah. So, but it, yet it's bubbling under. Yeah, so yeah. You, you, it's sort of, there's a sort of a, uh, a friction, a frequency, an energy. Yeah. Are you listening sure. to this, Matthew? Yes, You're getting all yes. this, mate. I'm very much your sure beaten wife. <laughs> was Matthew the man who called me a fool? Possibly. Probably. I don't remember. It's the sort it. of thing he'd say. He's probably drunk. Don't blame yeah. him for that. He's going straight down to hell as well in the new Bible or the old Bible. Don't matter how I many might have called you a fool like. for beating me on the banana record. Uh, all right. Did you get that banana record? Uh, no, a guy called Dave Sheridan, actually. We did a broadcast from a shop window. I don't know if you've ever done that. Um, but, uh... <laughs> you say that, Ray, but yes, we did pioneer the shop window technique <laughs> some time ago in Harrods. <laughs> yeah, OK, so, well, so you, but you were there with the great Jim Sheridan when he broke no, that record. No, Dave Sheridan, Dave Sheridan. So Dave and, Sheridan, uh, Jim Sheridan's he, a film he, he didn't break it, he equaled it. And we had a lady on from the Guinness Book of Records. Um, so he's coming back in next week to try and beat it, as well, in four bananas I'll... in one minute. Well, I'll come on the show, and uh, we'll, me and Matt will come on on Tuesday at some Brilliant. god-awful hour and smash that record right through the roof. Right, OK. Right. right, thank you for coming on our show, mate. OK, good luck, Russell. Bye. Take it easy. I'll speak to you Tuesday. Bye. There he goes, old Ray Darcy. Well done. Well done. Great. Oh, you made You're that on. awkward, didn't you? Show men front of Ray, didn't you, dear? That's lovely. <laughs> I know I get you home. <laughs> I'm going to give you such a kick in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to send Ray a present for that. Oh, do you remember the good times, oh, Matt? Matt just made mistakes you. with us. She made mistakes with us. We'll be dead soon. <laughs> it's all going to be all right. We're just a couple of regular Joes. It's all going to be okay, Matthew. If you want to email us, then there's something <laughs> wrong with you. But you can. <laughs> Russell.brand at bbc.co.uk. I do feel, about, um, I feel a bit bad about Ray Darcy because he was sort of nice. Oh, I never called him a fool, did I? You said he was an MF. You said that mother <laughs> F. Ray Darcy, you said you'd like to take him down. You said you would F him up using your Krav Maga. You I said it was the main reason I think learning. I might have, you know, like playfully said something about the banana thing. There was I wouldn't nothing have called playful. a man a fool. There was nothing playful about him. It was horrible. It was horrible abuse. You've got to go on his show. Yeah, I know. It's going to be tough, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to have to be you. such a little... He's going to grill me up. He's going to throw away the key, and he ain't going to nose me up. I'm going to pop out like Lenny Kravitz's belly button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right, well, that's OK. We're professionals. We can handle it. Look, why don't we play Glenn, uh, Glenn Hansard and Margaret uh, Glover's song, Once Falling Slowly, to celebrate Ireland, a country I've always loved and always supported. And Ray Darcy, a fine broadcaster and, dare I say, innovator. Not since Hang Orson Welles did, did, did War of the Wiggle, World. didn't he? I um, mean, how could you? I mean, it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? And then he sort of went, oh, you know, there's these people in the America Guardian, the and American... you're nicking it off them as well. We don't know about America. I'm stood in the middle of America now, looking out of a window. I can get nothing from it, mate. Nothing. No ideas. It's just a load of bits and bobs. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in America ages. It's just bits and bobs. Their flag got some lines on it and then some sparkles. I don't understand that of it, Del Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we going to do, Matt? What are we going to do? Look, should we just look? Let's put on Glenn Hansard. What is Marquita, this song? Why is this here? Glover. What's it's, probably, it's a bloody Oscar winning song from oh, the film right, once. Okay. And they're going to come on our show at some point and start building some bridges between us and Ireland. Not literally, so that we, you know, to metaphysical bridges between us and Ireland. Me and you and Ireland, all right? Yeah, yeah OK. Let's get it done. Later on, we will be doing our jingle race war, and uh, we'll be talking to Max Beasley. He'll be in here. And what else we got to do? We've got loads of stuff to be getting on with. Our new item, Gay, that's coming up. Because actually, we've got some quite good inquiries from uh, the gay community this week. So really? let's see if Matt can offend them with his jaded, antediluvian views. Let's uh, let's listen now to that song out of once now. Go on, man. That is that beautiful song out of once, Glenn Hansard and Marquita Erglover, Falling Slowly, it was called. But you're not into the old sentimental music, of course, Matt. I am, actually, and I like that. But I sort of it's thought, you know, we've, you know, we've gone go to the, the news. news soon. Let's have a little bit more of a chat. A bit more of a chat. That then is it's beautiful. Time for the old news. We're having them. They're yeah, very talented and beautiful people, and it's a very beautiful, lovely film that they need our support now. They've won an Oscar. So uh, why would you want to chat about? I don't know, mm? you know. <laughs> what kind of radio is that? I don't know. Is that how you're going to live your life? I don't I'm know. I'm still bruised from the whole Ray thing. Yeah, oh, well, what are oh, we North out, mate? A, we didn't. We, yeah, especially you. Nors it up quite bad there. I don't know how we're going to get out of that, mate. We're, one of us is going to have to fall on their sword. Look, I think it might appease Ray if you resign. <laughs> Matt Morgan resigned today uh, after calling Ray In the a hail of a bananas. <laughs>
that he was unable to eat in anything like a record-beating time. Mad Morgan, slowly chewing the potassium fruit, said, I'm sorry, I don't know what to chat about. Can I have my own radio Do show? Do I speak like that? Like that. Well, it's a bit like it, isn't it? If you think about it, it's a lot like it. So a next lot week, of Matt, interest in my heavy metal show. Yeah, no, oh, well, I've got an, yes, I've got an email on that subject. Here oh, it is. Let's hear it. Uh, this is from Mark. Uh, last week you talked about the possibility of Matt Morgan having his own heavy metal show. I, for one, would support this show. I think Matt is a brilliant broadcaster and has for too long lived in the ch- uh, the uh, effervescent shadow of you, Russell Brand. Don't know how a shadow would fizz, but there you go. That's uh, Mark's words. However, I was recently convicted of a sex crime, and perhaps you shouldn't take me seriously. <laughs> oh, Mark! Well, if you hadn't mentioned the sex crime, that would have been a ringing endorsement for Matt Morgan. As it is, it's I just still yet- take it as a ringing endorsement. Yeah, probably more so now, because you know it's a man with the courage to go, <laughs> get out there on the streets and commit a miscellaneous, unspecified sex crime, which, you know, could be against a tree or a bike. So before you go, oh, he don't appear to sex crime. I saw a sex crime once on Dallas, and I spilled biscuit all down my tip. Well, <laughs> what none of this. What are you talking about? I'm the People. person who's drunk, and you're saying <laughs> things like that. When, but, but, I was you watching know Dallas, I saw a sex crime and I spilt biscuit all down my <laughs> nipple or whatever what you just said. Tit. I said tit. Oh, sorry, tit. Tit milk. So now do you realise that what I actually did was a poem and that it was brilliant <laughs> and it's a real breakthrough <laughs> for us as broadcasters? <laughs> yeah? It just mm. goes from bad to worse. Yeah, yeah. Get home. So You're what? living in a daydream. You don't deserve a Hollywood career. You're a hey! silly little boy. I'm not a silly boy. I'm a lad of Hollywood career. You should see me on the boulevard doing some acting. I'm up and down the boulevard. I trash my goddamn sneakers good. I'm up and down the boulevard. Put it in my trunk. Listening to funk. Up and down the boulevard. I got a real career. Yeah, this is all here. fascinating, but we have to go to the news. Well, isn't this in a way more important? Listen <laughs> <in> the boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I like the way you prioritise news over my new hit song. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Oh, Dad! <laughs> right, okay. I'm your dad now. I was your wife earlier. Yeah, well, it's confusing times at the really brand is. household. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> mummy, all a big blur. <laughs> right, come on. I tell you what, if it's news you're after, you've come to the right place because there's a hell of a lot of stuff going off on this dirty little circle and it's about time a newscaster told us all about it in a rich, clear BBC voice. This is BBC Radio 2 online on digital and on 88 and 91 FM. Da 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 news. Who's that, stickleback or tall? Tall. <laughs> you're listening to the Russell Brown Radio Show. We <laughs> just had the song. news, then we had tall. You are, I know, you're always singing in that bizarre accent. You listen to me, Russell Brown. I'm here with Matt Morgan, my what co-host accent. on the show. some of the sham. That sort of voice. I don't believe Sounds I like ever sang like that. Remember, of course, uh, if you are an American person who wants to come to see me do stand up in Los Angeles, then do. Don't. I'm at the Paul Gleason Theatre. Now, imagine I'll see an old Russ in a room of 90 people. Can you imagine, Matt? What a bonkers suggestion. It's going to be, it's going to knock people bandy. I bet bandy. you try. I bet you wear a monocle. <laughs> Hello, I'm from the past. Oh, could you imagine? I'm baffled by your modern <laughs> creations, you Americans. A hot dog, you say. What, what, what? <laughs> well, I never did. Coming up later on the show is Max Beasley, although he ain't turned up yet. Nick Linnin, my manager's out there trying to find him. Nick Philps, the liar radio producer who has tied me into a deal with Ray Darcy to be <laughs> he, Ray Darcy's sidekick for 11 months. Uh, what, is, what is my deal with Ray Darcy now, Nick Philps? What have I got to do? I've got to do a phone with him next week. phone that's a technical term for a phone call. What an unnecessary technical term I've always <laughs> thought it to be as well. Uh, OK, yes, yeah, so we've got old Beasley coming up. But now, for my new item, Gay. Let's hear the... the do the... Uh, do the jingle, Matthew. Yes, gay! Hello, this is my item, Gay. This is from Luke. Dear Russell, Matt and G, I have a gay problem. My partner, Dan, and I, because we're gay, what's wrong with that? And I have to clean our house every week. That was in there. Every week. And this is the only time we ever argue gaily. How can we avoid falling out over who cleans the gay floors and who makes our gay bed? Should we get cleaner or simply stop doing the gay housework? Your advice would be gately appreciated. Top show, by the way. Please don't stop just because Russell is on the brink of international superstardom and Matt is clearly on the brink of a mental breakdown. Many Doesn't cheers say that. from... No, I did add on the last bit and a lot of the times it said things were gay. I added all I of those. you well. even added on the bit about your superstardom. Actually, that bit is there. Look, hold on, I'll hold the paper to the mic. 
Stardom. Oh, yes, I can see it. Start, do you see it now? Stardom, stardom. <laughs> there is all written all nice. Right, well, that's actually quite a good program. I mean, problem. Uh, they fall out when they do the cleaning. Well, Matt, it's down to you and me. We've not got no guests yet because uh, Beasley ain't turned up yet. Gallagher's gone home. Nick mm. Philps is a liar and can't be trusted. Me and you, Matt, come on. But we've got our stiffer jams than this, haven't we? What in our time? Well, I sometimes come on. wonder if um, mm. two gay men have an argument. Yeah, they fight. It, is that what you wonder? Yeah, we might move to violence. When you wonder that, do you put your hands down your trousers and pants? <laughs> <laughs> wonder about them having a nice gay fight, do you? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. I suppose we all wonder that a bit, and I think spousal abuse in gay relationships is a, uh, an unaddressed problem, Matthew, um, b- uh, but certainly shouldn't be addressed in the form of one of your dirty little diddle pot fantasies while you're all <laughs> strongbowed up to the eyeballs. Stop <laughs> saying I drink strongbow all the time. What have you had to drink What do you tonight? want, Strongbow to sponsor my heavy metal show or something? <laughs> <laughs> Other ciders are available. Matt Morgan but would let me drink really, some But they're not really, are all. they? The <laughs> Matt Morgan Strongbow Show. <laughs> BBC doesn't take sponsorship. Ain't you learned nothing since you've been on this radio show, you big bloody idiot? That's why you still haven't had a Sony PlayStation after seven years of endless <laughs> toy and plugging. I had to buy you one in the end, and then you'd finally gone out and saved up your pocket money and bought your own one. That itself same day, you ungrateful little pig, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was quite right, a strange so coincidence, wasn't it? It was a strange coincidence because we're in tune, aren't we, with our old synergy? That's the only way we cope with each other, right? Now, come on, yeah, so well, I'm, well, I'm I don't know what my advice is, but I think, um, let's think have a, bit a more rotor. About Get a rotor, you couple of silly sods. <laughs> get, an, uh, get uh, instead of kissing each other and getting off with each other, get me a rotor. Get on with it. Or, no, turn oh. cleaning the house into a sexy game. Oh, all right, hold on. So, Dan, you can be on the uh, bottom floor, excuse the pun, <laughs> dressed in a little French maid's outfit, and uh, other lad, Luke, you put on some, I don't know, uh, s- s- suspenders and that, and get yourself s- a nice... S- suspenders? <laughs> From new, 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 Reebok Reebok new studio <laughs> line. <laughs> it's because I said, when I said suspenders, I just imagined, um, you know who you are, wearing her suspenders, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it sent me through. The roof. Has she got suspenders? Have you bought them for her? Has she already got hey, her own? Hey, Matt, that's give her, not tied down give to her privacy. Give girl She's a privacy. She's either got some, she had some already, or she'll get some soon. Soon in the future. It's one of those things. Now listen, Matt, stop hounding girl. What do you want to do? Make her the new Diana or something, guy? <laughs> You're hounding her like Diana got hounded. Just give us one fact about her so I'll she knows who fact. she really is. You know who you are. That's the one fact. <laughs> okay, so this no, is... Is there an up, like, private joke? You could sort of, you know, and then she'll go, oh, that's me. She knows who she is. <laughs> yeah? Is there okay. nothing? Is there that I'd just many? Like to, hold on, here. Yeah, I'd just like to say, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right? <laughs> so, <laughs> that she knows who she is. I'm sorry. No, okay. I reckon you yeah. could hit all the women by just saying, do you remember that night I made you watch YouTube videos of me? <laughs> and she'll go, yeah. oh, it is me. Oh my god, after all that, yeah, but not in England. Do you remember that time you made me watch Big Brother's Matter Big Mouth, Stroke, and Russell Brand got his shoes, Stroke, Russell Brand show, Stroke, Comedy Live. What life, Russell used to do, he'd get people around his house and then go, watch this, watch this of me on the telly that he'd Sky yep. Plus. And then yep. you'd watch it with him, and that was a bit weird, but he'd <laughs> mouth everything he was saying. And he was like watching it with his eyes wide open in his own little <laughs> world. Going, you've got to do now. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> like that. Everyone was so uncomfortable and that would go on for hours. Everyone was enjoying that. Especially so girl. Much. Girl, I remember, girl and I, we, we look back fondly on that, you bloody cynic. When did we become so cynical? We've yet to solve Dan and Luke's sex problem. Oh, I solved it. Right. What's what do your you think? Turn then? into a sexy game. You don't know what cleaning um, is, do you? You pay someone clean- to do it. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Well, I'd, what I'd say is, yeah, get someone else to do the cleaning, Luke and Dan. And uh, what you want to do is just watch yourself on Big Brother's Big Mouth, I suppose, <laughs> while that person do the cleaning. You and you and your girlfriend, Dan and Luke, you can just enjoy each other's company. That'll be nice. Intimate, lovely stuff. Now, I think let's go with Matt's sex game one. That seems like good advice to me. So, hold on. Beasley's craning himself up the window now. Looks like a bloody great... He look, Max Beasley, he's got the face of Artful Dodger, hasn't he? Have you ever st- stopped to yes, study yeah. the man? Come on in, Beasley. Come in, mate. He's here. We might as well let him in. Max Beasley is in wearing an England tracksuit top. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome actor, 
drummer, performer, show-off, Max Beasley. Hello, Max. Hi, Russell. You're being welcomed warmly in London. And when you put those cans, as we call them in the industry, yeah. on your head, you will hear Matt Morgan. Hello, say hello, Matt. Hello, hello. Matt. Are you in Manchester? I'm in London, actually, Max. Oh, right, OK. That's you and that's you, Matt. In the you middle well, of Max? the night, 2.30 in the morning. Max, why are you so late? What's been going on? Well, I've been... Sp- oh, good game. I've Max. been spinning... Spinning. Well, yeah. The, the, this is the uh, exercise craze that's sweeping Los Angeles, is it? Yeah. And I've, I've rushed out here uh, without even having a shower or anything. I've, I'm rather mucky. Why is it called spinning when it's simply exercise bikes? Because you're spinning the wheel. Yeah, but why did it become spinning? When did that happen? Why is it not just exercise bikes? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. We had a guy tonight telling us what to do every three seconds, and it did my head in. Really? Yeah. Why, what was it going? What was just it? like, one, two, faster, faster. I told you to walk, not run. Da, da, da. Oh, it's like, ugh, I'm just what I burn the weight, kid, you know? That's all you want from spinning, isn't it? Da- get the derby off. Derby? Derby Kelly, Benny. Derby Kelly? Derby Kelly? Yeah. What was that? Never heard know. of him. He was a horse jockey. Darby Kelly Belly. Do you invent rhyming slang sometimes, Sometimes, Max? Yeah, because yeah. I sometimes wonder why it is I don't know it, and then it's because you, Max Beasley, have invented it. Max, I think of you very much as an old-school entertainer. You're charismatic, you're twinkling, you're forever showing off. You're quite... quite oh, he's undoing his top. Oh, Jesus, Max. Underneath <laughs> no, there. I'm just hot. Look at I'm that. I'm very hot. He's Max... You should know, Matt Morgan, that Max has just undone his top to reveal a sweat-soaked, gorgeous chest. Has he got small <laughs> nipples like you? Well, actually, they're just under the sweaty top. They're lovely-sized nipples, Max. Um, I've been told by uh, none other than Noel Gallagher and, and Matt that my nipples are to- too little, like jelly tots. What do you think of them? Oh, I think they're lovely. They're all right, aren't they? Yeah, nice, nice colour as well. Lovely shade of brown. You're quite dark, aren't you? Yeah, I'm quite dark. Oh, sort of you a... don't know the half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain inside. What are your origins? My origins? Yeah. Just from Essex. Just really? From Essex before that, you know, East London before that, bit of Ireland, bit of Italy, but, you know, sort of... Uh, yes, Victorian nothing. times. I come from the Victorian days. <laughs> <laughs> you know Willy Wonka days? I come from then, don't I? You know when crows walk the streets proudly with Union Jacks? <laughs> I'm from those times. Them the days I was happiest. It's been hell of a show, mate. You've missed some interesting things, right? Well, I thought you were looking at you there. Uh, I, no, I didn't. I thought you were looking at Matt through the other room, but Matt's in London. You Matt's are, in London. You're actually looking at yourself. <laughs> yeah, of course I am. There's a reflective surface, and obviously I'm using the opportunity to train my eyes directly onto it. Max thought for a moment, judging from the... <laughs> Doe-eyed adoration. <laughs> so there's another human yeah, that we're moving in. We're filming this, of course. You will be able to look at this content on bbc.co.uk. There will also be lots of vodcasts coming. And if you want to see me do... Sta- Max, do you want to come see me do stand-up comedy on the 5th and 6th of April I, the, in, really, La- in Los Angeles? Yes, I'd really like to. Good. I'm good at it. Because I think you're funny. Thank you very much. That's kind of you. Now, Max, come on, let's talk about you, because this is not how you do interviews, talking about yourself to another person. Let's talk about Max Beasley. Max Beasley. After studying at Cheetham Music School in Manchester, Max has toured with the likes of the Style Council, James Brown and Robbie Williams. Who's best out of them, Max? <laughs> <laughs> Max, who's best, though? Uh, He's the new No, I, I, so, yeah, uh, Max Beasley guest hosts gay. Like oh, quite yeah. Strange. But, uh, anyway. There's an item we do called gay where we help, help people with their gay problems. Oh, that's okay. Beautiful. We've uh, already done it because you were late. Mm. <laughs> Unless you want me to make up another gay problem. No. I've just seen your sweaty body. I thought, oh, bloody hell. Bend what should I do? Bend over and I'll drive you home. Oh, um, well, there you go. <laughs> listen, Commander, I think out of that lot, yeah. Mr. Brown was the uh, Mr. Brown was the one. And tell us why that is. Because he's just such a legend. Well, he was such a legend and it was just lovely. And I think it was the last performance that he did before he unfortunately passed away. Do you think James Brown willed his heart to stop beating because your percussion had let him down. <laughs> he could have done, but I was playing piano with him and I think he quite enjoyed it. <laughs> Can't only matter a bit of makes up. a bit of banter. It's a bit of friendly banter on the wireless. Okay, so you you featured in James Brown's last ever performance. Yes. Have any other people wow. that you perform with then gone on to die? <laughs> 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 um, artistically, most of them, but no, not, not physically. <laughs> That's no. good, because otherwise it would start to look like a jinx. It would be weird. Max, kiss of death, Beasley. Yeah, he yeah. tickles the ivory and sends you to the grave. Yeah. yeah. Now, Max, I know you're a gifted musician and you are in no way cursed. According to <laughs> Max's biography, he is... He'd just played at the MTV Awards for George Michael, yet another person who should have been on that list, when he watched Robert De Niro in Raging Bull. He was so impressed, he decided to become an actor immediately on the spot. Is that true? A hundred percent. You just watched Raging Bull and go, right, I'm becoming an actor. I watched Raging Bull and I went, right, I'm going to become an actor. Just like that? Yeah. 
Of it was amazing. I was in Levenjoom in my dad's house, just near Burnage, which is where your last guest was from. Um, and it's um, it was oh, lovely, Gallagher, the Gallagher, yeah. yeah. And um, we were sitting there. And it was raining. It was horrible outside. And he said, "Just watch <laughs> this film, kid. You'll love it." And I watched De Niro and just thought, "Wow, that's amazing. I'd like to be able to try and get somewhere near that in the next fifty years." And yeah. what a challenge that would be. And it is a challenge. <laughs> Something to do, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Pips the streets. You're actor. I call it actoring. You know, because yeah. you know me. I'm twee and I'm cute. Yeah. But, so, um, did you? Uh, uh, did you? You're doing some actoring now, are you? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm unemployed in. No, you ain't. I, I am. What I'm, are you doing? Just going around pretending to be on a bike? I'm <laughs> That's no kind of a job for a man. No, no. I'm writing at the moment. What is it? It's a film about the um, uh, mafia in the 60s in Manchester. Hold on a second. Hello, it's Manchester. I'll cut you up, mate. Hello. Suddenly, Russell Brand, a.k.a. the chameleon, looks <laughs> a shoe for the lead part in Max's smash it film, Manchester Mobs, starring R. Brand. All right, mate, give us me money or I'll right carve you up. All right, our kid. So, what about that? Very, very good. And yet, people say, Max, that I can't do acting because I only play myself. Matt Morgan, for example, said that because in that film, that Judd Apatow film I've just done, the character is close to myself. But that's still actoring, isn't it? Still actoring. Because I didn't have, e.g., I didn't have a bit of coral wedged in my leg. You've got to find a bit, you, uh, you've got to find a bit yourself in something. I do often find a bit of myself in something, <laughs> Max. It's the only way I can make it through the night to tell the absolute truth, dear. Max, <laughs> trained with a method acting coach. Tell us, Max, what is method acting? What does it mean? How do you do it? Well, method acting, you know, you, 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 either, you either invent what you're going to do and pretend to be that person, or you use what they call sense memory and mm -hmm. visualisation. So you don't, you know... E.G. 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 Yeah. Give us an E.G. 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 Give us an example. Is that example? <laughs> E.G. Give okay. us an example. Say oh, you was playing... Just a... in. So, for Love instance, Max for if, that. if you're in prison... Yeah, uh -oh. ...and you're in a cell... And yeah. there's a huge hefty lad in there that wants to have his way with this you. This is in a film. And yes, it's a More scene. like a dream, toots. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you would do is, you know, you, you'd make choices, and we don't, as men, want to kill anybody, really, do we? Realistically. Realistically. Um, no, no, not actual killings. Unless not killings. I'm a member of the Manchester mob and someone dared to cross me, in perhaps that... someone from my rival town of Leeds. Oh, <laughs> those no, buggers. So, no, so what you would do is you would use something that you want to kill in yourself. <gasps> what, you'd, like? you'd, Well, mate, I... I Vanity, no, egotism, <laughs> At the time, I used to suffer from panic attacks. No. So you put that on the geezer and then you'd, you'd smash them to pieces like you're smashing the panic attack to pieces. That's amazing. You don't seem like the sort of man who'd panic. You always seem in such control. I went out of a social event with Max Beasley here. I've never seen such a confident man swanning around Los Angeles, tipping his hat, twirling his cane, pulling the birds. Not pulling the birds in real way, because I believe you're happily involved with a female currently, are you? Yes. Nice. Me too. I'll always have girl back in England. And you know who you are, girl. And Current it's you female. To. That's her name. <laughs> Yeah, oh, dear. oh, female. That's her. Oh, God, I miss her. So, um, you, but are you all right being in love? I, I'm all right having a go. Yeah? Yeah. It's difficult, though, isn't it? It's the hard. commitment? It's hard. <sighs> and especially in Los Angeles because of all the different, different girls. No, nah, but kiss. it's easy in Los Angeles because most women in Los Angeles are nuts. Well, that's what I like about them, because, yeah. say it quietly, mental illness improves fellatio. <laughs> now, <laughs> hey, now that was misogynistic. <laughs> I don't think it was just misogynistic. I think you offended, you know, swathes of the community there. People of Earth. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> say it quietly. Hush, hush. Wicked whisper. <laughs> Which radio host admitted on air? <laughs> oh, dear. What a stupid thing for me to have said. But funny. I say we leave it in. OK, um, we're, we're pre-recording the show, so we've got the option. Max <laughs> meditates for mm. an hour each morning. Max, do no, you? No, I don't, know. Why is this turned up on the research? Well, it's one of them things that comes in that journalists just whack in for a laugh. Bloody journalist, just Bloody whacking journalist. something in. Just whack it in for a laugh. Tell us about your morning routine, Max, dude. Is there <laughs> anything, some cereals? It's know? incredibly boring. Why? I, I got, well, I got up at half six, uh, six o'clock this That's morning. Early. Went spinning. <laughs> How many spins do you have a day? I've done two today because I'm trying to lose the belly. The You're day. spinning like mad. I know, I know. Uh, I come back, a bit of porridge, sit down. Look at um, a bit of work. Do a bit of work. <laughs> a bit of porridge. <laughs> a bit of porridge. Do a bit of porridge. It's on day right. release. 
Oh, yeah. but it ain't too lumpy. Done a lump of bird way back. I got involved in some rubbish. <laughs> I carved some geezer up, striped him up all proper. Got done a bit of porridge. <laughs> why, are you, right, so just, why are you living such an eccentric lifestyle, spinning your way through life and I'm doing porridge? I'm a renaissance porridge? man. I'm quite a boring guy, believe it or not. No, I don't believe it. You're I too am. sparkling, twinkly, Max. Right, Max does not meditate. Well, we can strike that from the record. If that ever crosses, I should, I should, but I, I, and I used to, but I don't anymore. I think I've told you that Nick Philp's producer of this radio show is the son of a vicar, and uh, he's probably responsible for this erroneous piece of research. Is there anything you'd like to say about the clergy or uh, Christianity in general and those who follow that faith? Good luck. Good luck to you. You've got a heaven and a hell, purgatory. What a lovely idea. Okay. So uh, Max, Max's father was a jazz drummer, and his mum was a jazz singer. Are those things true? Hundred percent. So do you attribute, then, to them your sort of jazz ways? Yeah, my mum's singing, give me the melody, which made me a good pianist, and good. my dad's drumming made me a good drummer. And perhaps you use those musical rhythms in your seduction, Max, <laughs> as you coast around Los Angeles, uh, alluring people in with your smile and your beguiling eyes. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you played Rachmaninoff's third on someone's Francis, it would be terrifying, but, you know, probably a good mm, evening. Bloody hell, yeah. And so can you play things like that, proper piano? Mm. You're nice and talented. You've got a good personality because a lot of uh, musicians are often they're quite introspective people that can't cope with the world. Mm. You'll notice that about mm. them, probably from the, some of the people that you've worked with on this list. For example, James Brown, timid, timid gentleman. <laughs> 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 You'd see him on stage, shuffle on that stage, wouldn't he? <laughs> Poor sod. <laughs> He's probably happier now. Uh, Max does some voiceovers for. Do you want something, mate? You're right. Do you want some more? You first. I was just tea? laughing there. That's Sharon Smith. Yeah, Sharon Smith. Me and Sharon, having a little hello. Hello. Hey, Sharon. She's saying that least Sharon Smith, stylist assistant friend, just walked into the room. You right, Sharon? <laughs> I've just had a really stressful phone call for about three hours on the phone to Virgin trying to book flights. I've really liked it. Are available. It got to. The, they are. Go it on. just got to the point where I just gave up. I just thought, you I gave up? Well, no, I don't, I've done yours, but I literally gave up because I just thought, I don't even care if I go home anymore. I cannot stand it on this phone. What happened to me on the aeroplane if you're not there? You've already said I'm on a different flight to Nick. I'll just be on the plane. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Confront self. Confront self in the sky. Genuine <laughs> self frightened. I think you need a bit of time on your own. Oh, Do no. you good. You can really think about stuff. I don't want to think about stuff. 12 hours of thinking about ah! stuff. 12 hours of solid thinkings. Oh my God, the brain box will explode. You might actually be a changed man by the time we get off in London. (laughs) Please, I'll just say to Virgin, make sure there's good air hostesses on that bloody flight and make sure the toilets have got doors unlocked properly because I'm a sex addict and I'm in a lot of trouble. You may call it Virgin, but if there's a single air hostess not pregnant by the time that plane lands, I'm going to go bonkers up there. I'll kick my way into the cockpit and that's going to seem an appropriate name because I'm going to bash the door in with me in it. And why wouldn't I? What brother? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> huh? What actually happens is he books himself business class. Everyone else is in economy. <laughs> and he's, he just like pulls the ladder up, spends all his time up there, and then he comes back. And goes, oh, what did you have to eat, Jeff? Oh, just a bread roll, did you? Oh, yeah. How much leg room you got? Oh, you'll be all right. Just <laughs> going right. back to my palace. <laughs> What's that you got there? Arthritis for having your legs all crumpled up. You poor old sod. Do you want to play Tetris against me? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, you do. Come on, tune in. We'll play Tetris in the sky. Don't let me be alone. Don't let me die lonely. <laughs> right, OK, that's all right. That's something we can sort out after the show, <laughs> for God's sake. Ah. Oh, never mind. Come on, back to the interview with beloved Max Beasley. Max, do you do voiceover work to advertise TV sets? Yes, I do. Go on, do some voiceover style voices. Imagine Slimline Beauty with a new Samsung LCD TV. It's not that hard to imagine. Oh, bloody wow. hell, I want one! Consumerism, paying off at last. Max Beasley there with his gorgeous voice. Other vo- do some other voices. Other um, TVs are available. Other, other TVs are available. Other pretty. TVs are available. Oh, let's see, now that's as good as... So you're probably not allowed to say that contractually. You've just said no, that they're all equal. Flex, he- uh, flex account from Barky Card. Oh, oh nice, Max! Oh. You can do it with anything. Max, you absolute <laughs> train You can do it with anything. anything. <laughs> well, say words. You can just, you can on, just do, it, do it on something else. You can just say words. The Russell Brand Show, the 14th of March, 2008. Pre-record running order. Oh, oh never God. did a pre-recorded show <laughs> sound so sexy. I'm blushing. Oh, Max blushing, I've just kicked out some muck. Oh, what a show we're having. Max Beasley, oh, what a voice. Come on, let's get him saying stuff. Well, you might as well do the questions yourself. Here you go, we've done all these ones. You, you ask them to yourself. There, Max, is that a true fact there, Bane? 
Mac stars in a five-part thriller series, The Last Enemy, which is on at the BBC Now, released on DVD on Monday. Wow! wow. Is it Max? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Look at his normal voice. What a job. <laughs> Don't ever do that normal Manchester voice ever again. Total. You know where to turn. <laughs> um, oh! Oh, all these products sound wonderful, although I'm against consumerism, it's wrong and it's spellbinds us. Never get involved in products. Raymond Blanc, cookery course, yeah, I've done loads of them, I've done about four of them. What, you're really good at cooking? Yeah, blinding. Hold on a minute, so when you've got your wife, right, you can do that lovely voice on her, or your bird, do that lovely voice on her, you can cook her up a storm, tickle the ivories, bloody hell, do some actoring, this you've got it all! But I'm mentally disturbed, so I'm oh, sort of like... Right, that's the screws thing. Screws it all up. I've never seen the dark side of Max Beasley, but then I suppose I've not no. excavated subcutaneously the surface of your mind. You seem to me very, very happy, man. Yeah, I am. I am quite happy. I can get a bit mental, though, but I am happy. What do you mean, you get a bit manic? I go a bit woo sometimes, I know. yeah. I assumed, Max, that you were a massive drug addict. I, I know first... you did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You thought I hoovered the cocaineus into my nostrils. Because drugs are very bad, we all know that. I have, of course, recovered from, or I'm in recovery from <laughs> drug addiction myself. Drugs are bad. But, so, yeah, but I just assumed you were so upbeat, I thought this must surely be because of the drugs. No, never done a drug in my life. Look at that. Max Beasley. What an example for I young do, folk. I do love alcohol. Not such a good role model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awful womanizer. So no, yeah. no, not woman, not I'm, I'm, no, no, very monkish. I've not, I've not, I've, I was, I've, I've had monkish. Two, I've had two four stretches, bang. So that's eight years out of the game. Well, the fact that you look at it as a prison sentence, Max. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, that was because I played Tom Jones, a lovable rogue. Oh yeah, I remember that. You that's all that. it was. And yeah. so people go, oh, he's a lovable rogue. De -de -de -de. No. You're Quite not, guy. No. They're not a lovable rogue. No, I'm a lovable, a lovable, lovable lad. Lovable lad Max Beasley keeps it in his pants. Look at this. We're discovering all sorts of things. You could learn a lot from Max. Max Russell. What can <laughs> I learn, Matt? Go on. He can cook. He's yeah. musical. Oh. I like that when I'm 64 tripe. Hold on! Before you condemn When I'm 64 by Brilliant Me, why don't we listen to it eventually again for some time? Because Max might like it. All right? Have I you got it? He's probably heard about it on the grapevine. Well, they did this beat, they did a commemorative uh, Sergeant Pepper album. I had done a cover of When I'm 64. Some people say it was awful, whereas I maintain that it was adequate. So, <laughs> 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 what about that then? Right, hold on, here's some more Max Beasley facts. So, right, we're going to watch Last Enemy, it's been released on DVD. So, will you get more money of that of the DVD, Selmore? No. <laughs> Buy it if you want, don't bother. Don't bother. Don't. Who cares about bloody DVDs? Watch it on the, watch it on YouTube, or as I call it, MeTube. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Good, have that, Max. Go on, take that out there. Go on, son. <laughs> MeTube. Go on the road with that. Uh, you've done acting, modelling and music. Not modelling. You've never done modelling? No, that's another misquote. Look at me, kid. I was <laughs> you've got to be doing modelling. You've a certain charm, a weather-beaten charm. That you've not done any modelling. Do you have a short attention span, or perhaps even a mental illness? Uh, I am. I think I could be bipolar. Oh no! I think I've got a bit of ADD. Oh Christ! Uh, but I've got you long. You're just spilling AIDS badly there. Yeah? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry, bad. Joke. I think I've got a long attention span because of my job. Very long. What for? What do you mean the acting or yeah. the music? The you actoring. have to concentrate mm. when you're on set in a trailer board. Depends what you're playing. You're playing a rapist or a heroin addict or a child molester. You've got to concentrate. You Jesus, who's your agent? <laughs> 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 no, do you know I what? I can I'm... play all those guys! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a very funny lad. Uh, you know, nice one. It's, it's, it's just my job. Um, right, okay, so you have to stay in character and focus when you're doing those things, is that what you mean? Well, no, but I mean, it's, it's intense bouts of, of focusing in it, because you've got to do mm. good work, otherwise it's over, innit? Yeah, yeah, you you've know. got to do good work, otherwise, yeah. You've got to do good point? work. you got yeah. to do good work. Good learn well, from thought... that, Russ. <laughs> Why? I do good work, look at he'll, his work he'll I'm be doing. In it, any old film they give him. How dare you? How dare you question a career that includes St. Trinian's a story about <laughs> girls at a school starring old Russ as Fat Harry. No, Flash Harry. Oh, I took that seriously. I lived as a Fat Harry for about ten minutes. <laughs> who, was, who, was, who was the girl in that? With the Jim Atkinson, you mean, with the bob. Yeah. With the bob? Oh, she's the real deal, isn't she? She's from Dartford, where Matt's from. You oh, steamed into me there with the name and then did a head look. Body language was bad. Have you had a tickle? Oh, no, no, I'm no, I didn't. She wouldn't. Have, I didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> because of oh, my loyalty to girl. Who's her, girl? probably? 
If you're listening to this, who also includes her, <laughs> I'd like to say I would never betray you with you because I love you, girl. She's very pretty. Isn't she pretty? Lovely girl. She's a proper cool girl. And guess what? Yeah, she's one of your own from Dartford. One of your own. Girl. Oh, she's lovely. She's yeah. good people. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, she's lovely. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Really lovely girl. How do we... Uh, oh, yeah, we're talking about me for yeah. a bit. And forget Sarah Marshall, Judd Apatow. What a great film that is. We saw that the other night. First class pretending by me there, Max. You'll Did love you it. pretend? But I'm pretending to have a... Matt says all I pretended was to have a different name from the one I've actually got because the character <laughs> is so close oh, to me. Oh, a different job. Sorry, you were a rock star, weren't you? <laughs> yes, imagine that. So imagine being a rock star. What? Instead of a comedian, I'm a rock Instead star now. Instead of just now. dressing like a rock star, he actually was one and he had a different imagine name. That. So I was justified in wearing the clothes I was wearing, which were my clothes, <laughs> <laughs> oddly. So, but yeah, no, listen, that's a good bit of acting, you pig. So, hold on, here's some more things. Oh, we've done that already. You've done There's that. nothing left there. You've only got one page on me, kid. That's really depressing. <laughs> but hold on, that's because we don't do very much research on this show, because it's quite fast-moving and we're relatively lazy people. Nice. Now, are you a key member of the LA football culture that exists over here? No. Why? Don't you um, play football with, I with used to play all them English people? Nah, I used to play football, but my mm. stepbrother was really good at it, and so I then focused on cricket. Right. And I got very good at cricket. And boxing, I thought. Boxing, yes. Do you use boxing in a fight sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Say you're having a fight, you think, oh, to No, box. you don't do that. I try not what, to fight. I like to talk on my way out of stuff. But say you had to Max. Say he was pushing in the corner by a bully boy. <laughs> say that bully boy won't take no for an answer. He's got you in the corner. He wants to fight this bully boy. <laughs> Would you then use your boxer in? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I'm Under those no circumstances. No, nah, I'm not a violent lad. Ah, oh, that's nice. What you've never had any fights. You've never been a fighting type of a person. <laughs> not that famous one, because that'd be bad. But well, have you had any other? Have no, you had any had a, of course I have. But yeah, you get older, don't you? And you try and talk your way out of it. Yeah, I do, because I'm not very good at fighting. But if I was good, <laughs> then you'd be for it, <laughs> you guys. Right, now it's time for the Jingle Race War. Oh, let's have it all done by uh, Max Beasley. Yeah, take control of that, Max. You're a professional man. What do I do? Just read out stuff on there. Like, we, we have to select jingles, and then we... Like, people, listeners, send us jingles, right? And if they're good, we keep them and be part of the okay. show to introduce items like gay, where we have gay problems, nanecdote, where we talk about funny things nans have said, and, you know, other items. Matt sometimes will do an item when he's in the mood, stuff like that. So... So uh, now it's time for uh, Jingle Race War, Max Beasley. Last week's Jingle Race War jingle is available to play at the start of the item. Oh, well, let's play wow. that now, Max. Jingle 62. Jingle 62, Matt, play that. That's Matt, not Max. So right, well, let's just listen to the one from last week Do to show you, you the it standard. Is. Erno Perenen. Max, are we ready? Oh, I'm ready. He likes to swear And look at the dog when he wears his hair Is it Paul McCartney? Is it Jimmy Page? It's no Gallagher, they look the same age. <laughs> Wow, that's me! Someone's turned into a jingle. That's really good. So who was that from? Erno? Can that was Erno Pyrenen, who's a wrinkly rocker. Erno, Erno Pyrenen has made a jingle called Wrinkly Rocker, which yeah. is dedicated to Noel Gallagher, because yeah. he goes, oh, no, I don't want oh, to be I called a wrinkly rocker. Saying. Yeah, nice. So, like, Noel comes on the show quite a lot. Now he's got his own jingle, but that was me singing, and Erno has turned that into a brilliant jingle. Could you hear? That was my actual voice. Uh, yeah, you've got, you're a little bit gruffer, and obviously you've been doing some work on your vocal cords, but it was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Max, for noticing that. Okay. As a brother actor, I appreciate yeah, okay. And um, what's the next jingle and what's the subject of that next jingle, uh, Max? The jingle is number 63 and the subject is general. General? Is it just a general jingle? It's just a general Could jingle. Be used for anything. Anything. It's, it's going to be handy. Yeah. Have you found it, Matt? No, we Haunting. So weird. Well, that sounds Kate like the Bush. kids. So weird. Who is it? Is this a geezer here? What's his name? Ben Maudsley. Ben Maudsley. You it belong in the bleeding like Maudsley Mental Hospital, mate. Bloody things like that coming out of your brain box. It was like Kate Bush when it was weird. It was like Kate Bush after she'd had an acid omelette. And we, why would Kate ever do that and no one's suggesting that she did? <laughs> Just to put it out there. <laughs> Just as a we, we do have your, um, when I'm 64, queued up as well, Russell, if you All right, so if you oh. want to hear some proper entertainment, Max, we're just going to uh, pause the Jingle Race War item for a moment so that Max Beasley can experience what will surely be this summer's smash hit record, <laughs> When I'm 64, by old Russ. Not too much of it, though, because it does people's heads in. Here we go. Here we go. Lovely intro. Look at that. When I get old... Ugh. It's me. Losing my hair. Oh, I can't so many years from now. Oh, oh it's brilliant. Hope you're listening, girl. This is for you. Greetings, <laughs> <laughs> bottle of wind. 
Matthew, you were ruining this gravitas. This is this bit, Max, I go really high, it's great. Would you lock the door? I'd lock the door if someone was singing like that near me. No one's going to sing like that near you. still need me? Will you still feed me? That's touching. When I'm 64. Don't sing over it, Matt. You balls up my record. You stamped them and all over oh, my bricks. Good, isn't it, Max? Oh, let's kill it. It's lovely. It's, like, it's a little bit like um, Schoenberg. Right, turn it off now. Turn Schoenberg. Off. Schoenberg, yeah. right? Not my words. Kind, sympathetic Max Beasley's overly <laughs> generous words there. Getting him through a difficult moment when put on the spot on a radio show. Schoenberg. All right, Matthew. If you want to send an email to the Russell Brand Show, then do russell.brand at bbc.co.uk. You can get into our jingle. And why wouldn't you join in? Look at the fun that we're all having when we criticise, for example, Ben Maudsley for his bloody general thing. <laughs> What's the, that's the, the next one, Max? Could you use your. Yeah, Jingle 65 from Luke Gay, and it's a jingle race war. Oh, look at that. Right, Just his normal voice is getting me going now. We missed 64, probably because of when I'm 64. I thought that was 64. That's when I'm 64. Don't turn against my hit smash <laughs> record when I'm no, 64. No, the number 64 is being removed You shouldn't use so much bats. reverb. It covers, it covers <laughs> the insecurities, right? Jingle 64, Andrew McLean. Andrew McLean. Oh, yeah. What is this from Manson? I think it's from Marilyn Manson. It's from Marilyn Manson. That's bloody generous. Marilyn Manson. I'll chat with Manson. Is that it? <laughs> that's a jingle for a thing that's not happened because we changed the time of the show. Thank you for making it, by the way. Because Marilyn Manson wouldn't be able to come. So what a waste of everyone's come, time. Come, come, Is that it? Is that the jingle? Yeah, that was it there. Do you like it? Your judge. It's four bars long, kid. Oh, that's a jingle, right, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was nice so far. <laughs> so, there you go. What's next up, Max Beasley? Luke, Gr- uh, Luke Gray. Luke Gray. This I believe is a he's jingle a friend of the for show. the actual jingle race war. Well, this, this is, is good. This is postmodern. It's a jingle for the jingle race war. He's doing a jingle for himself. So if this is a good one, we can use this from now on to introduce this item. Do you now, pay him? That would, no, of course not. We don't pay any of these people. Remember all the scandals, man? <laughs> 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 no, no one gets paid. This is listener content, which we're very grateful to receive. And then, so, come on, then, let's, see, let's hear Luke Gray's jingle for the jingle competition. What well, a breakthrough. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> good. Very good. Do you, know again? Do you know what I'd have done? Instead of everything, I'd have put in establishing good jingles, and then I think it would have been perfect. <laughs> Imagine if it got, what is it good for? Establishing good jingles. <laughs> <laughs> then that would have been perfect. So that if you can, can do that, that can again, be made Luke. for next week. Yeah, listen. All right, so I'll just give you, I'll give you this clean, Luke. This is for you to use. Establishing good jingles. Establishing good jingles. Right now, Luke, you can make it again. You can drop that in, mate. You know the technology. Let's attempt We've that got... now, Russell. I'll pull it down when it says nothing. Ready? Everything. Okay, you know when I'm not very good at things like this. Okay, no, alright. Here we right, go. I'm ready. <laughs> Establishing good jingles. <laughs> yes, it works. Damn it, it lives. I'm Frankenstein. The villagers are pursuing us with flames, but they don't know what we're trying to achieve up here in the lab. You idiot villagers. We're pushing back boundaries. We're saving the world. We've got Max. Beasley, the jingle race world jingle is a triumph. Luke Gray, you and I, what a collaboration. More successful even than my collaboration with David Arnold, with whom I made when I'm <laughs> Oh, God, I just came. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so that's a brilliant one. Well done. So what about when uh, a gen... When I'm moon. <laughs> when I'm nana oh, moon. <laughs> She's <laughs> dead. Come on, let's not be out of order. Nana right, moon so let's is a have character. A... I think I'm going to have a She's a rock character. Actual Nana Moon's dead. Max is feeling out well. You're right, Max. I think I'm going to have a corona. You're making me laugh a lot. Corona's a type of beer. Don't have one of them, mate. You'll <laughs> oh go right. over the edge. But, <laughs> uh, or a coronary. Don't have yeah. nothing. <laughs> Just do the next jingle. It's important. Jingle to 66 is from Jack de Gama. Oh, Max. Oh, it don't even matter. You didn't finish the word six. I'm still turned on by you. <laughs> Sexy little devil. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's like about it. 72 BPMs. He should have put it up to about 110. Should have been 110 Russell BPM. Um, Look at Max. Proper music talk from Max. You know what I mean? Yes, Max. It I was do. a good, good old try, though. But I reckon if he whacks that up, 100 BPM. 
A for effort, mate, but whack it up to, what is it? 100 BPM, it alert his voice, though, because everything's going to go, all, all, so, all, or change the keys. So we're going to change keys, mate, but you've got to try to but satisfy Beasley. Very good. Good attempt. Well, that is good the Jingle stuff. Race War. Well done. So we've got some good ones, though. We've got an actual one that we'll be keeping from young Luke <laughs> Gray. That was good. He's one Very for good. the actual. No, next week, when we do the Jingle Race War, we've got a jingle for it. Brilliant. Establishing good jingles. Excellent work there. Okay, so here, have we got... Excuse me, sorry, burping. Sometimes I'll get confused. Should we uh, do a uh, record out of our brains and minds and eyes? Let's yes. do a record. Matt, what do you want to play, mate? Well, uh, we've got Run DMC. Yeah, stick them on, bang them on, put Run D DMC oh, on. Actually, like, do you want to hear more Chiba? Have you got any Omar? Sh right, we have she, got yeah. Omar, there's nothing like this. Beautiful! And we've got with Mercy Max Beasley by on the triangle. Duffy. So what are you going to really go for, Max? Go for your triangle. Sure, this is go yours. I think we'll go for There's Nothing Like This featuring Omar. On the Russell Brown Radio <laughs> 2 show. <laughs> Good evening. You're listening to Russell Brand on BBC Radio 2. That was Omar, there's nothing like this. There certainly isn't anything else like it because Omar's career was ruined by Max Beasley with his kiss of death <laughs> style <laughs> triangle pain. <laughs> he was really doing the triangle on that, was you? I think so, yeah. I can't quite remember. I did, I did all his first arms because we went to school together. Did and, you? Yeah. And then me, him and... Uh, You've had Jerry. some bonkers life, haven't you? I've had a bonkers life. Right. But me and my other mate, Jerry, he went off to play bass, and then we all became session musicians, and then Omar was an artist, and Jerry and me now pl play together in um, little bands now and again. Well, not little bands, big bands. Big but, bands. Yeah. When you did that mime, it looked like you and Jerry touched each other's boobs. That's what you mimed. <laughs> no, I used to sleep with Jerry, right, right, in Catford, when I was a student at Guildhall. Yeah. And uh, what he used to do is, because I used to want to have loads of space in the bed, yeah. he just used to feel me, me bum. And then it. with the Corey out, and I'd go, whoa, and I'd have about an inch left on the bed, because I played a game with him that I was going to, like, have a pop, and then yeah. he'd, uh, you know, take it a little step too far. Max, some of your colloquialisms <laughs> are so deep that you'd need a PhD in slang to get through a cup of tea with you. Corey, what's Corey? Hickory. Hickory stick. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to work that out, but how does it work? Ah, uh, well, you, how does it work? You know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's that thing I point at girl when I want love. You've got a lovely pair of rhythms on. River, yeah, I understand rhythm and blues shoes. Yeah. Right, I understand the conventional ones that are actually slang. Yeah. Max... Corey, hickory. Hickory stick. Oh, hickory dickory dock. No, hickory stick. Everyone thinks hickory dickory dock, but it's hickory What's stick. What's a hickory stick? I'm not too sure. On the penny, what's the penny? If you've just joined us, you're <laughs> with Russell Brand and Max Beasley discussing He's anachronistic and pointless language. Anachronistic? Bang. Bang on, what does that mean? Anachronistic, out of time, difficult, I'm just difficult. How does it rhyme with Owen Cockney rhyming slang? <laughs> <laughs> anachronistic? Oh, give me an anachronism right up, me Harris. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a real thing. Aristotle, bottle, <laughs> bomb, that means. Stop being rude. All right. Right, now we've got an email here. It's from someone calling herself Miller. Hello, Russell, Matt and G, and of course it, Max Beasley, but how could this person ever know, have it? known? No, no. They would never have known. <laughs> to add to your Babes and Corpses subscription, which was a, a website, Kristen Bell, the actress, came on here last week. She told us she was once asked to model for a, cal a calendar called Babes and Corpses, where an attractive woman is asked to pose with a corpse. The only thing that astonished me is that she was asked to pose as the babe as opposed to the corpse. Matt Morgan <laughs> brilliantly said uh, at the time, he goes, uh, I oh, bet that it. looks like Noel's photographs with Sarah. Uh, like, uh, to which Noel simply looked down and a single tear fell into a cup of tea. He'll probably write a song about it, though. He'll make him happy. So uh, that's what Babes and Corpses is. So on with Miller's email. I suggest you take an interest in the magazine at the end of this link. It's called Bacon Busters and is about mm. the gentle sport of pig hunting in Australia. Of particular interest will be the babes and boars section where they photograph a scantily clad woman next to a dead pig, sometimes holding a rifle. It's so popular they even do a yearly calendar. Where do people get off making a calendar around the idea of a pig and a, and a woman? Max Beasley. I don't know, but a lot of people relate to it. I've certainly woke up with a dead pig next to me. <laughs> Max, <laughs> you sexist! I am. You sec a dead pig. When I was. What on earth did you do? <laughs> what kind of life are you living, Max? Over there in that mansion, for Christ's sake, what goes on? Waking up next to dead pigs is fat oh, back all over again. <laughs> it's a bloody disgrace. Nah. I mean, yeah. we've all made mistakes, but do you know, I've, I've yeah. never regretted a single woman that I've slept with, but above all else, it's you, girl, that I treasure. <laughs> now, come on, Max Beasley, you soppy old sausage. Let's get deep into Max Beasley's heart and mind with my new item, Psychological Evaluation of Max Beasley. <laughs> Max, what okay. makes you tick? Uh, what drives you forward? What I, is like the, I like the sky. 
Sky. <laughs> I really am sounding like a complete gop. No. But I like the sky. I love grafting, man. I like working. Grafting in yeah. the sky. Yeah. So some sort of job you could do in the sky, like scaffolding up yeah. there in the sky. And I've done bar- barrowing. I've done barrowing. What is barrowing? Barrowing all the bricks on the, on the site. <sighs> like odd carrying, but harder. More bricks. Uh, uh, odd carrying's horrible as well. I wouldn't like to do anything like that. I went for a job on a building site once. They simply laughed. Did they? Yeah, no one even did. Oh, hello, I'm here to inquire about a job. I have very weak limbs and brittle bones. If there <laughs> anyone needs some cup of tea, or perhaps I could put some lavender in your jeans pockets and you'll smell fresh throughout the day. <laughs> I, I was asked to leave the site. They said I was bad for morale, Max. Bad yeah, for morale. Yeah, that Max, would be. I thought our mutual friend, hypnotist Paul McKenna, had, ah. had cured you of your fear of uh, turbulence. Well, Has he, he not? Yes, he ha- Well, what happened is I went to see Paul about five hours before a flight and I got on the plane and I must say I, it was amazing. The, the, the plane over Goose Bay mm. started, we started getting a bit of turbulence and I, 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 was, I was asleep. I woke up from it because it was banging around a bit mm. and I was just like, oh man, I'm really tired. I want to go back to sleep when normally I would be looking for a defibrillator because I'd, I'd be so absolutely terrified. So I saw him and he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, and then the last flight that I had coming back from Mexico about yeah. two weeks ago, we were on a small plane and um, we um, we had a bit of a bad flight and it was just a bit moody. But I took Valium, you see, and he did say to me, he said, don't take Valium because all the techniques won't work. And he's right. You drug the techniques clean out of your mind. Well, you can't. I don't know what it is, but he's absolutely right because without the Valium and, and uh, with only about half a bottle of vodka, I was cool. Isn't Valium mm. sort of a drug? I mean, it's a legal drug. Do you know okay. what? I was thinking about that because I was saying I haven't had a drug before, but I have had coolers. I have had the five mils. You mustn't take drugs. Or... No, um, but I've only had them for flying. I wouldn't like go around my daily day and go, yeah, I'd give us one of them just to take the edge off. Mm. And Max, also, in the beginning of the interview, you presented yourself as some sort of Prince Charming style monogamist. Then the second the record came on, you went, here, yeah, get on a flight. What you want to do is go out the bank. That's where they keep the bunks. You can have it off there above the toilet. <laughs> like that, I said, Max, I'm simply trying to arrange a flight home to visit my mother. Why you're trying to turn that into some sort of sky sex extravaganza is a mystery to me. <laughs> Where do you get off Max Beasley in my new item? <laughs> attack Max! <laughs> Max attack! <laughs> so, how come you know that? Have you been up there in the sky having it off? No, years ago I had a look up there. Just had a little look around. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. was up there with? on your own, was she? Yeah. No, it was ages ago. Years ago, I was about 18. I think we were with Weller. And flight Paul Weller in the jam. Oh, Star Council. Yes, yeah, flight of Japan or something. And right. uh, it was the girls that showed us. They just took us and said, "Hey, this is where we stay. Isn't right. it really cramped?" And I went, "Yeah." And they went, "That's, yeah. that's it. Lovely." That's the end of the conversation. Did, oh. did you not think of that junction? Oh, Max just mimed a sex act. <laughs> Max, sex act, Max. <laughs> Out, Max for the sex act. Mm. Also, we'll know you this on the flight over. Sharon Smith, my assistant. You'll, you'll like this, Matt. Scopped off with some geezer what, on the plane. Snogged him oh, up at the bar. Come to the microphone oh, and own up to your friends and your mother and your sister. It was a little kiss. He wasn't even that attractive. I no. had too much to drink. And it was sort of a bit warm on the plane. And you know when it's a bit warm, you sort of feel a bit more sexual. And anyway, we had a little soft, but then luckily enough, the seatbelt sign came on. Otherwise, it may have gone further. Uh, what, you would have had a pop? Well, no, we were, sat, we were at the little first-class bar thing, you know, like in that oh, little yeah. bit standing there and just had a little, little kissy. Yes. I insisted that seatbelt sign was brought on <laughs> because Sharon was behaving <laughs> like a sky You slut. were so jealous because you were doing all you could possibly do to get some interest. Well, that's the end of the show <laughs> this week, <laughs> and what a great he show it's been. Desperate. You I'd like to his thank face. He does get guests. desperate on planes. Do you know what? Oh, Matt, you should have seen his face. When he, he went, what, you actually kissed someone? What? And I went, yeah, and apparently this bloke had already, like, sort of kissed someone else or whatever, and he was just going... He was up there, huge heavy around. That is at the point where you're going to be. What was this? Some it. sort I'm of going down to economy. youth club? What was going <laughs> on? <laughs> Matt, I did listen, that 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 I'm going down went, economy. I'm going down economy and came back with all these little like people following him. Oh, they were all above age, all those people. Little, little people. Above age. <laughs> little people. I think oh, they just look little, a little because they were limping. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something psychological up. about flying and how vulnerable people are. I think there's an there's got to be something attached to it because I flew one time from. Um, uh, uh, London to New York on the rocket, right? Mm. And I, and there was a girl. I was in four. Rocket. Yeah, in the Hong Kong, right? Oh, you sexy pig! And I always wanted to go on it all my life.
wife used to watch it go over me when I was a kid thinking it ain't ever going to happen and then this phone out this ain't oh, ever going to happen I'm on it I'm on it right Sean, so all, of, all of a sudden I am on it on, on, the, on, on the one year in 2001 when it then blah, blah, blah. kiss and, of death uh, Max yeah. Beasley thank you <laughs> get us on the con call no. bush bash bush so, bloody thing catches fire 10 minutes later no so and, and it's a weird thing because I was sitting here and what they do is the geezers come out hello and um, mm-hmm, and uh, he gave me some uh, salmon eggs which were delightful and mm-hmm. then they used to serve Krug 85 which is a blinder so you're sitting there and there was a girl right on the right hand side of me sitting here yeah. and Ka- Kate in, in top I've had jewels all over mm-hmm. her you know um, Russian I'm doing it oh, Lord, I'd like, I'm Russian. Russian. Oh, and um, it was a weird thing man because it was all the sexy thing and the concord and do 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 yeah what happened well we're going to tell you Get when, we got, <laughs> when we got to the, pick the bags up yeah. she came over do you and mean I'm, your ball bags and she, <laughs> <laughs> or the bags Max Bates' ball bags <laughs> no she came over and she handed me a note with her number and address on and yeah. said I would like you to visit me tonight and mm-hmm. uh, I thought well it's a geezer because she actually did sound like that, right? And then I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> and she was obviously yeah, what? Um, cool <laughs> but, um, of Max Beasley's ball bags, <laughs> oh, Max Beasley ball bags, and now his throat. <laughs> but um, she, uh, I didn't do it obviously because I thought she'd probably have a geezer in there that would want to film it and then cut me up. After, Why would you, you assume know? that? Well, that's what women like that are like. They have geezers who want to film it. They have geezers who want to film it. That's, I think, as good a time as any to end this BBC British <laughs> broadcasting corporation <laughs> broadcast. Thank you for all our guests, mostly you, Max Beasley, for livening the show right up, coming along like lovely character you are. Sharon Smith, what wonderful contributions. Nick Phillips, you lied and got me on the Ray Darcy radio show, for which I will never, ever truly forgive you. Matt Morgan, you were good today. Oh, where the bloody hell's Mr G? With a poem summarising the show, because he turned up late, because of his West End bleeding career now, that of which I am fully surprised. Supportive. He was late. Now let's have Mr. G to summarise the radio show brilliantly. Please welcome Mr. G. Yeah. Woo! yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Our Traitor. Well, the mic's gone. Well, there's been a small the poem. Of course, the mic's gone. Shot. Why don't you f off to the West End and use projection, you traitor? <laughs> Rack them up, cue ball, solid stripes, stack them up. Misjudging the cushions, sheets and pillows, Cadillacs discreetly acting up. Emus possessed, race done with a balsamic caress. Controlled and drawled all aboard to join the miscued express. Nominating the pocket, ISDN dropped from its hickory dock socket. With the right <laughs> amount of spin, coloured eyes and skin forced to watch it. Cooking up a sausage, fire lying solo with a photo to keep true. Check out the eyeliner and hair everywhere on MeTube. Woo! Woo! There we go, Mr. G. Summarising the show the there. There we go. Against technology. Fighting it all for... Well, God bless that man. What a gift he has. Mr. G, thank you very much. Share your gift. Share your gift with the people of the West End, you <laughs> treacherous rat. Max, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you all our guests. Thank you all of you for listening. Keep downloading the podcast. Keep us at number one. If we're not a number one, get us to number one. That's where we belong. That's the only number we liked. So, I'm Russell Brand. <laughs> this is what I do for a professional job. Matt, thank you very much. See you soon. I'm coming thank back you. to London. London. Here he is. Some bloody old news.